Hey Star, are you ready? I'm a lady. So let's song. Welcome to Idol Days, the podcast about <laughs> idol anime. I'm Sarah. And I added something new. And I'm Star, and I'm shocked by this remix that you did not prep with me beforehand. I didn't. I wanted to surprise you because today <laughs> we are talking about another show that begins with the question of, are we ready? Oh. And it is Uda no Prince-sama. Competition for the throne, I gasp. Oh. But yes, if you couldn't tell from the episode title, we are talking about Uda Free today. The episode title and the fact that you literally just said it like 30 seconds ago. Yes, I did. Uda no Prince-sama <laughs> shortened to Udapri. They are, Uta for free. me, interchangeable. Uta so that, that title that title translates to, like, singing prince or something? Yeah, singing prince-sama. Prince of songs-sama. Yes, yeah, so, something like that. <laughs> yep, <laughs> something like that. Singing prince-sama. And... And if you could not already guess, if you did not already know, this is a Geidel show. It's more of the boys. I I would argue probably the most famous Geidel show. Uh, probably one of the OG Geidel shows, I would say. One of the earlier ones definitely, that were anime. Yeah, definitely one of the uh, longer lasting ones, if not the most famous. Because this has like, what, four or five seasons now? It's four seasons now, but the last one came out in 2016, so big shrug hmm. on if or when another one will happen i thought there was one that was more recent but i don't know there i'm stuck in a time an... warp always <laughs> maybe an ova or a movie i haven't been following that closely maybe i a movie would not surprise me if i'm being honest so sarah tell us about these boys who are they i'm looking at a picture of them there's six of them there are first i'll give you a little history of Udapri just so you can immerse yourself in the time period and everything because this isn't quote-unquote older show like it's not that old in terms of anime, but it came out in 2011, mm -hmm. uh, July of 2011. Uh, the animation studio was A1 Pictures. They do like two anime a season, even nowadays. Like they're yeah, and that's also continuing the thread of the competition. That is the same company that made Idol Master. Yep, and guess what, Star? What? It also aired at the same exact season as Idol Master. <laughs> Oh, right? Competition. I, I was looking at the dates and it was like, wow, these the first episodes aired like three days apart. Like on different like Dang. channels. But it's like, wow. Or, idol going origins. Hard, going hard in the idol sauce, apparently. Going hard in the idol sauce. Uh, Uda Pri, actually, its history was not in rhythm games. Uh, Uda no Prince Sama was originally a Otome visual novel. So a uh, reverse mm -hmm. harem, main character is a girl, and you're romancing boys visual novel yep yep which is listen y'all i'm gonna be real upfront. i tried watching this show back when it first came out because we've discussed sarah got me into idols by showing me the original idol As master anime and idol master idol aster <laughs> idol master anime i listen i just ate a bunch of pringles it's not my mouth's all messed up anyway um freudian slips freudian slip idol master <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, Sarah showed me Idolmaster in 2011, and then sometime around the same time, she was like, hey, here's this other idol anime, and I watched, like, the first three episodes of this show, and I went, nah. <laughs> nah. Yeah, it, uh, it definitely, uh, goes heavier on the whole, you could tell this was a romance visual novel originally. Which... Yeah, definitely. Like, we'll talk about it in the first yes. episode, but I remember the first episode, like, these boys are all just tripping over themselves trying to get in the main character's line of sight like it's extremely blatant extremely in your face and i was just like eh this is a little heavy-handed why don't we go into the characters <laughs> just so we know who we're talking to i would love that thank you so the main character the girl uh her name is haruka uh she oh has... my god i forgot that was her name we've got idol master haruka and yep. this haruka and this haruka <laughs> from the same animation studio and they aired at the same season yep S idol illuminati, idol illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> totally not oh. totally not other haruka nope secret twins uh so this haruka uh she also has like short chin length bob hair but her chin length bob hair is like a slight orangey color 
It's kind of salmon-y. Yes. And the most notable thing about her is that she has these, like, yellow, dead, empty eyes. They have no She literally, pupils. like, this drives me crazy <laughs> about her character design. She looks so fucking soulless. It's just, like, you look into her eyes and you can just hear the void echoing back to you, like, whoa, 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 whoa. And, like, I feel like if it was, like, the style of everybody, like, it would be less weird, but she's the but only one. But it's not! <laughs> she's the only one! Just these dead, soulless eyes. But Sarah, don't you see? She's dead and soulless because she is merely a construct for the watcher of the anime to insert their soul into. I mean, yeah, that's the idea, right? <laughs> yup. Uh, so she is kind of, as Star just said, the one that you're like, this is the person I will project onto and the boys will love. Yep. Main character, Chan. And she's like very much imagine what a main character of a romance visual novel reverse harem is she's like no shy. personality no <laughs> personality hey she's shy she's a blank slate she comes from a what like a poor background uh At she's a, a nobody rich kid school she goes to rich kid school and she's perfect at everything or anything she's not perfect at she becomes perfect at no discernible personality traits so that's haruka so now let's get to the boys because they're more fun these are the ones that we care about yes uh so the first one i'll talk about is otoya uh he is big main red character hair energy he's the red one big main character energy yes so i guess he's less he has... of a main character in Udapri since haruka's main character but He's but he, of the idols, he's the one who's like, hello, I am obviously the main character. Look at me go. Look at me go. So he has like red hair. It's all choppy cut. He's always mm -hmm. happy. He looks like the main character of every idol anime. Yes, he does. He, he looks very much like Riku from Idolish 7, but like slightly older, I guess. He's the red one. And he does not have the asymmetrical hair. Actually, I, th I think Riku from Idol 7 would technically be older. Oh. Because aren't they... Yeah, because Riku's I, I was not just in school. I was just talking about in... Yeah, I was just talking about, like, in terms of art style. Oh, yeah, no. All these boys, art style-wise, look like they're in a Notome game as well. Like, they all have, like, a little they're bit of They're all very beef. <laughs> they're all very beefy, even though they're supposed to be, like, what, 16, 17? Yeah, yeah. And they got those, like, They look like they're mid-20s. Yeah, big pointy chins, larger hands. Not not quite yaoi hands, but you, you, they're sizable. They're like, they could grow into their yaoi hands. Like a bird grows into a new coat every winter. That's a thing birds do, right? I don't know. No, <laughs> birds aren't a winter <laughs> thing. Birds grow into a new coat every winter. <laughs> I meant, like, as you grow up, you lose the baby feathers every and for some reason, I got birds and dogs mixed up. <laughs> no, I like to imagine this is the thing. Yeah. It's like that bird I mean, in bird. Avatar Lost Airbender that just opens his mouth and starts screaming. That's what your birds He's, do. That's me. That's you. <laughs> I am that bird. I scream always. So I will go to the next character you kind of meet. Uh, it's Ren. Uh, he has. He's like the tallest one. He has Oh, really... we should also go into image. We should also talk about image colors because yes. there's a couple of these boys I'm not going to be able to tell apart. They yep. look like evil twins of each other. Yes, they do. <laughs> so uh, Ren is like, he has like hair that covers one of his eyes and his hair goes past his shoulders and uh, his, it's like sandy blonde hair. He's the flirty one, like sexy one. He's orange is his color. Mm -hmm. So that's that boy. Yep. Uh, you should talk about his evil, tw his his good twin now, because he looks like the evil twin. But the so he's the orange one. Uh -huh. He looks like the good. He looks like the evil twin. But then the yellow one looks like his his good twin. <laughs> oh, oh sort okay. Of. I, yeah, listen, that's sorry, fine. I've only seen I've only seen the first three episodes of this show, and that was the vibe I got. But I feel like based on some stuff I've seen, he might be creepy. I don't know. All I know is that the blonde hair woman with glasses, who is the yellow character, he looks like a like a humanoid golden retriever. But then the orange one looks like him, but he's, like, a little sexy, though. Yes. So yellow is Natsuki. Uh, he does indeed look like human golden retriever, like, fluffy golden hair, glasses, very happy. And, like, his idol outfit, he has 
his tummy showing so you could give him some pets. Yeah. He has like pets. the V, the V, the hip V, the hip on this v. picture that I'm looking at. Uh, we, uh, he is generally like you assume happy go lucky golden retriever type type of character. Uh, the rest of his backstory we'll get to later. Okay, looking forward to it because I actually do not know what his whole shtick is. Yeah, he's slightly later I just in the know- series. I just know that he's he looks fluffy, and from the three episodes I've seen, he was my favorite. Yeah, he, he's he's pretty enjoyable. Uh, and then I'll go into Shio, uh, it's, who's a small pink one. He's baby. He is baby. Uh, he and so I guess the other thing, there's six main boys in the series, and of course they're in a boarding school because where else would they be? And they're all, mm-hmm. like, also roommates with each other, if it helps. So Natsuki Golden <laughs> Retriever is roommates with Shio. And they're also, like, all childhood friends or whatever. But, you know, that's yeah, fine. No. Yeah, no. But, yeah, Shio yeah, no. is, like, he's shorter. He's, like, the shortest one. He has, like, blonde hair, but, like, it has, like, really strong pink shadows. Like, all the undertones are pink mm-hmm. when he's drawn. He always wears, like, punky-style bracelets. Uh, his um his idol outfit he has a fedora he does have a fedora my lady my lady uh, <laughs> hi my lady oh. my lady I'm a lady Hajime yo <laughs> <laughs> uh, and basically his personnel is just like the same as Mitsuki in Idolish Seven he's like the short one who also is kind of mature short spunky one short spunky one yep a little sporty. And pink. And pink. Uh, the next person I'll talk about is Masato. He is the blue one, not the purple one, the blue one. The blue one and the purple one who looks exactly like him, but edgy. Yes. But like, his... slightly rougher haircut. But Masato- They look- the- Sarah, these two are- these two are the same character. <laughs> I'm looking at them on a lineup. One of them is just, like, has slightly choppier hair. That is the only difference in these boys. Their faces are exactly the same. Their hair is, like- the edgy boy, he's like slight. <laughs> his hair is like slightly more desaturated. They look freaking identical. Yep. And I'm mad about it. These stupid anime boys. <laughs> this will make you even more complicated because well, we'll get into it. But Masato is uh, so he's a Toya's roommate. Uh, he wait no, he's Rin's roommate. I got this mixed up, even though they look the same. <laughs> Masato. I'm is honestly Ren's gonna roommate. need like, hang on, I gotta write down all these boys' names because I am going to forget. So so pink one is show. Like S Y O T O, um, and then red one is O Toya. O Toya. O Toya. Who's the orange one? The orange one is Ren. Okay, and the yellow is Natsuki. Okay, and then the blue one is the blue one is Masato, and Masato is Ren's roommate. Okay, so he is he's blue and orange, complementary colors. Got it. There you go. So hey. Masato, uh, he he's has dark, like I assume supposed to be black hair, but his has blue undertones, different from the last. He, character. he looks like he looks like Chihaya. Yeah, actually, that's a great analogy because he's like the serious one, the one who like is paired with a lot more like traditional Japanese imagery. So mm-hmm. Chihaya is a good equivalent character. Or like Umi, he looks like, Love Live Umi is he, also he, a good one. He's got like the big frown energy. Yeah, he's he's the serious one. And then the last character is Tokia, and he's purple. He's the edgy one, the he, blue one's evil twin. The blue one's evil twin. <laughs> Us. Are, are, are they like actually related? No, or no, something? they're I'm not related. Laugh. They're not related. But there's a oh, it, well first episode, so. No, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get to it. it. We'll, we'll get, get to it. it. We'll get to it. It's first episode. Don't worry about it. So, um, uh, <laughs> Tokia has, like, black swoopy hair, so not as much blue undertone, kind of closer to gray, so, like, kind of makoto but it's, color. it's kind of, it's like a desaturated blue, and it's, ugh, these boys look so similar. Yes. I can't handle it. He's also frowny, but he's frowny in, like, an edgy way. Whereas the other one's frowny in a serious way, he's edgy frowny. It's different. He's like a grr frown, and the blue one is like a hmm frown. Exactly. 
There we go. I've solved it. We've I've unlocked the mystery. So now you know these six boys. And there are more boys in the Udupri franchise, uh, but these are the main characters of this anime season. There are other main I characters know this in other anime because seasons. Because despite not having seen season two, I um you will not be surprised to know that of the boys I have seen from this show, my favorite one is, of course, the green one, who's not in this season. I'm, I'm I sorry, don't, I know Star. nothing about the green one who comes in later. I just know that he's a good boy. <laughs> Star and her green ones. <laughs> Star, me and my greenies, okay? Star and her I'm greenies. I'm gonna put him in a, I'm gonna, you gotta eat your greens. <laughs> Star, I have your so leafy many. greens. <laughs> your leafy greens. I have so many exciting things to tell you in this episode, Star. I'm so excited I'm, for you. I am I am excited for you being excited about telling me things. I listen, I don't know <laughs> hardly anything about this show except for like some slight background radiation I got from a couple friends who are very interested in this show like offhandedly saying things to me and also that like I've seen some of the animation from like the musical numbers. And this is one of those weird ones where the animation gets worse as it goes on. Yeah, but the, the first season's pretty good. Later seasons, they, they start diminishing in quality, probably because they start pumping it out a lot faster. Yep. Uh, and we also, gotta keep... 3D games came out, so they have 3D models they can manipulate. <laughs> yep. And, like, I was watching some of the later seasons dance numbers, and I'm like, this looks absolutely terrible. Is this really, like, the fourth season of this show? And the it, first season looks so much better than yeah, this. Yeah, it sucks because the first season, so actually, first scene of the first season is, like, the live concert. So it's like, they're in a live concert, and they're singing the Magi 1000% Love song, which... Hey! Are you ready? Nine. Are, are you, you ready? ready? Eight. Are, are you, you ready? ready? Seven. Sit. Listen, I've yeah. watched that video a couple well, times. So I used to show it in my panel. I also want to say, like, overall, I, I, my knowledge of Udapri, I have only seen season one of Uda no Prince Sama. I, but I will say, I, like, love the songs. Like, I think mm -hmm. Udapri music is, like, like, solid jams. We got some bops. We got, we some, got some bops. Jams. We got some top hits here. So, Magi 1000% Love was in my Weeaboo Driving to the Cons playlist for, like, ten years, I, so. I vaguely remember this. I think you may have played this on the road at some point. It's but so yeah, good! Like, also, just talking about it from, like, the cosplay side of it, um, this, this was well before Love Live, but this was, like, kind of back in the early days of Udapri, um, there people would like go on stage dressed as the characters and dance to this song. Like that was yeah. the thing to do was learn this choreography with a group of your friends dressed up like pretty idol boys. But that kind of fizzled out after the second season of the anime and you don't really see that much anymore. So bring people back gone. original Magi 1000% love, not 2000% <laughs> love, which is the name of the second season. 1000% love. Yep. Sanpa San, San love. love. Hey! <laughs> hey, so, so I mean, yeah, you, me, and four of our friends, Sarah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the opening scene is, like, them singing in concert, right? So, like, you get, like, mm -hmm. the flashy animation. There, It's all 2D animated. It, it's, again, it's same studio as original The Idol Master series, so. It's very nice. It's, it's very nice. Uh, and then we go into the main plot. So, like, there's a concert. And then all of a sudden, not concert anymore. So you're assuming this was like the future vision. So now mm -hmm. you're back in the past. We have to go back. We have to go back. To the past. <laughs> so the past begins, and you see Haruka, and it's a snowy day, and she's standing outside the gates of like a large school campus. And this school, by the way, like it looks like a giant like college campus. Like it's not like itty bitty school. It's like bigger than Oran it, Academy School. It's grande. It's grande. And she's, like, standing outside the school, like, at the gates, and there's, like, these guards, and she's like, please let me in for my entrance exam. I'm only, like, five minutes late. And the guards are like, no, nobody who is late deserves to apply to this school because, Be gone. Know, be gone. Empty-eyed main character. 
There is no room for your kind here. And she's like, oh, but it was always my dream to go here. I came from so far, you know. Then you should have gotten up earlier for your entrance exam, girl. Well, Come on. You find out because all of a sudden uh, there is a red-haired boy who appears behind her uh, oh. because she trips and falls or something and, like, helps her up. And it's Otoya. Oh, the red-haired boy. The red-haired main haired character. boy. And he's like, hey, guards, you have to let this girl in. The reason why she was late is because she walked by three old ladies who needed help on the way to her entrance exams, and she stopped to help all of these old ladies. And would you want someone in your school who would ignore these poor old ladies? I love that this is a trope with two episodes in a row now. (laughs) It really is. is because that happened in Zombieland Saga, yes, and now it's happening here. You you missed your audition because you're helping old lady. Maybe Zombieland Saga is a reference. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Or just, there are so many old ladies in Japan in need of help, <laughs> but who will help them except for these random main characters? Who Ooh. just really want to get auditions, but can't make it in time because they're helping old ladies. I feel like if you're the main character of an anime, you just need to, like... If you have a pressing deadline, you have to be at a place at a certain time. You need to get there like three hours early or like leave way beforehand. Because main character, you're gonna run into some shenanigans on the way, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. including X number of old ladies. Or trucks. RNG, old ladies, trucks. Ninjas. That was that other anime. (laughs) Uh, That was the one we don't speak of. That idol one. (laughs) Minus love, minus life. (laughs) Minus school, minus love, minus life. That other idol anime that we're never going to speak of again. (laughs) Cough. Um. (laughs) Forbidden. Forbidden. So, yeah, so she's she's there and she's like, yes, I didn't want to say this because I'm too good and I didn't want to talk too much about myself, but I did help those old ladies. Uh, Also, like, the other thing that's really confusing is I'm assuming these are the entrance exams. But also it's kind of worded like Otoya's there to take his entrance exams, but he just kind of shows up. So like, is- Yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> is he also late and now trying to help this other... Maybe. Con- I guess the other thing is I guess they're technically on different, like, tracks at the school, so maybe not? But, hmm, I don't know. It's a mystery. Uh, also, Ren shows up at some point, too, and also argues to the guards that she should let her in because she's just, like, an innocent lost lamb or something. What she calls... The orange one? Yes, the orange one. He calls her a little lamb all the time. That's creepy. Yeah. Yep. So, because he's the flirty Big one. Big Otome game energy. Oh, huge Otome game in- energy. Like, already, <laughs> these boys are like, and we are going to smooch you. It's like, we are here to ravish you. You're the most beautiful person I've ever seen, and the most perfect. I can gaze soul. into your soul. Your when soul. I gaze into your soulless eyes, I can hear the sound of the universe. I mean, and the universe sounds like. So, anyways, we go forward, and now school's in session, and hey. you see Haruka. So you assume she passed her exams in those few minutes where you met her for the first time. Yay. Uh, it is spring, there's cherry blossoms everywhere, everyone's wearing uniforms, uh, they're like, you know, like a button-up top with a blazer over it and a skirt, and like all the girls have like plaid skirts that look like pencil skirts, except for Haruka, who is like a frilly pleated skirt, so her skirt's different. I remember this bothering me. <laughs> yeah, she has a completely different skirt than anybody else. I remember distinctly that this bothered me. That's we are unearthing <laughs> memories of mine from like 2012. So, so that's how you know she's special. That and the fact that like all the this is another like old anime trope where everyone else who's not like the main characters has just like you know brown and black hair. Like you know who the main characters are. Yep. Big uh, anime character energy. At this point, you also meet one of the side characters, uh, Haruka's best friend at the school, and also her roommate. Uh, it's Tomo. Uh, she's, uh, in the picture I sent you, Star, she's the one, she has red hair, and it's usually long, she usually wears it down, but sometimes in ponytails. She's really, she's like, cute. yeah, she's really cute, she's really, like, together looking, like, she has, like, girly eyelashes, and she tends to wear accessories, so, like, bracelets or rings or, you know, 
She's she's. Cute. I like her. I like her too. I like the redhead ponytail ones. That's that's my type. Yeah, and she's also like it's it's nice because it's an Otome game, so there aren't a lot of female characters because most of them are male characters trying to get with the female character. Womp womp. And she's nice because she's like another girl, but she's not like a rival. She's just like your buddy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's just nice. Uh, so they are at the school, and again, school campus is huge. Name of the school is Sao Tome Academy, just so okay. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, giant. And so this school, the principal of the school, is an idol, or was an idol, is slash was currently an idol. All okay. of the teachers is sla- all of the teachers are or were currently idols. The point okay. of the school is every single person, again, at this giant campus, like thousands of kids, I assume, are all in school to either become idols or to become composers for idols. Yeah, I. so this is, I think, our first show of a subgenre called Idol School. Yes. Or at least that's what I call it. Because there are, this is one of many shows where this is like the thing, the premise. You go to school to become Idaru. Like, um, Prepara, Aikatsu, or two others that are notably of that... Tr- Prepara is not, I guess. Um, Aikatsu definitely is, though. Um, where you just go to school to become an idol. And it's crazy because, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of students at this school. Yeah. So you're like, wow, the, the success rate on these idols must be, like, really low? Or this is a Japan where everyone's an idol. Just anybody can be an idol these days. Flips hair, scoffs, rolls eyes. Exactly. Uh, and also, just the president of the school is, like, completely, like, wild. He's kind of like Kotaro from Zombieland Saga in personality. Like, loud, yells a lot, comes up with weird ideas. He also, like, has the entire campus, like, bugged. So he's, like, constantly watching them on, like, video cameras. That's not creepy at all. Yeah. So just when when you say principal of the school, I'm imagining like old bald dude in a suit. Uh-huh. But I know that is not the case. So you should describe what this character looks like. So he's older. He's not bald. He's just balding. <laughs> uh, he has a very square face. He always, again, very Kotaro. He always wears glasses. He always wears a suit. He has brownish hair. And he has like one of those, like his mouth is always like kind of big on his face. Like gregarious. Okay. Yes. It's like, hello, students. Exactly. He's very, hello, students. I just parachuted down from the ceiling and welcome to your entrance to the school. Yes. So he is the legendary. Apparently, he started this school with all of his idol earnings. I suppose recently, if he's still an idol, I don't know. And I guess his his thing is he became famous and he started an idol school. Because why not? I... I feel like this is one of those shows where you just got to be like, don't think about it too hard or it falls apart. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, And so this first episode is essentially you just kind of meeting all the characters, right? So, like, Mm -hmm. there's a point where Haruka's, like, in the dining hall with Tomo, and then, like, all of a sudden a guy who has, like, fluffy hair and glasses, and it's Natsuki, he looks like an orange retriever, golden retriever, not an orange retriever, comes out and, like, gets all excited about Haruka, and he's like, oh, I want to love you, you look so cute. Yep, just just tripping over himself to get in this main character's field of vision. Apparently he's in love with her because she resembles his dog, Elizabeth. So, oh, yeah, that, that was weird, I remember yep. this. And I guess his thing, Natsuki, you're immediately like, this guy is weird and goofy, and he likes cute things. Uh, but then he is stopped by Masato, who is the blue one with Chihaya energy being like, mm-hmm. don't do that. You have to be serious. Look how cool this girl is. I love her for other reasons, I suppose. God. You know? <laughs> 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 Essentially. But he, she also ends up seeing Ren again. So she's like, oh, you're the other guy at entrance exams. And then she sees a toy and being like, oh, I'm so glad that we both got into the school. And thank you for helping me apply earlier. Uh, and apparently, like, all of these boys, in addition to, like, loving Haruka, are also, like, the most popular kids in school. 
<laughs> the popular boys. This feels like a mean girl situation almost. <laughs> it really does. Because I guess all of these boys are the ones that all everyone else has like fangirls over, especially Ren, like the flirty one. Apparently he has a ton of fangirls because of course he does. Uh, so Harga's had a crazy first day. She met all of the other boys. They're all in love with her. All she's trying to do is get her bearings at this school. Um, but these boys just keep throwing themselves in front of me. I don't know what to do about this. Another trope that happens in the show a lot is Haruka just like in her head monologues to her grandma being like, oh, grandma, this is what happened today. It's so weird. Um, I mean, I guess that's an exposition device. Yes, it is. But it's kind of funny because like most of the time I think of that happening, it's like characters who are dead. But Haruka's grandma is definitely not dead. She's just like <laughs> psychically talking to her. Dear grandmother, I bring you news from the war front. There's so many pretty boys here. Maybe her soulless eyes allow her to telepathically communicate, is what I'm saying. Oh my god, no, wait, what if her grandma, she's like a familiar in D&D, her grandma can see through her eyes. What if she is, is her grandma? Literally, li literally living vicariously through her. It's like, my grandmother dreamed of being an idol, and now I am going to carry on her dreams while she psychically controls my body. Look, Star, I've only watched season one, so you might be onto something. <laughs> if that's the plot of season two, three, or four, you legally have to tell me. No, no, wait, yeah, I'm no, gonna laugh. <laughs> Even if it's not, I, I, I'll, I'll write to A1 and ask them to make a fifth season. <laughs> where that is the plot, where that is like the, the, the twist in the fifth season that Haruka has been secretly been piloted by her very much alive grandmother who is actually a secret wizard um excuse me anaplex uh just so you know i think you need to fund another Udapri season i have this great idea i run flips hair an idol podcast uh-huh we we know things we have authority in the genre i'll have you know we are very knowledgeable and also holds up idol illuminati sign being like i'm on to you it's like i know what you did i know what you did but uh Anyways, Haruka's back at her dorm, and she's there, and Tomo's like, wow, you're so popular, and Haruka's like, this is so exhausting, but I hope I do okay at school. Being a main character is so hard. <laughs> it's so hard to have all these boys dote on me. Immediately. <laughs> so she, uh, she puts up a poster, and the poster is of an idol called Hayato, and he looks familiar, just if you've seen pictures of the show, but you haven't met him in the show yet. So this idol mm -hmm. called Hayato has been around apparently for a while, right? And yep. I guess he is the reason why Haruka wants to become a composer for idols. She's got, see, all, all these beautiful boys are throwing themselves down in front of her, but she's only got eyes for this one other boy that she's got a pretty poster of. Eyes but no pupils. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep pushing this. Wait, listen, she's staring at me from my computer <laughs> monitor so right now. Nice. I'm looking at this picture. And she's just fucking staring through me. It's like she's she's like trying to guess how much you can sell my bones for. And like, she knows. but She knows. <laughs> but Hayato apparently was the reason why she wants to be a composer because at some point she went to Tokyo and she was so overwhelmed by all the lights and sounds and music. But then... All of a sudden, Hayato came to her and saved her. And by that, there was like a Hayato music video on like projected onto a building nearby. And I guess the music was so soothing and inspiring. It helped her refocus her energy and regain her passion for music again or something. Or something. You can just say he's pretty, Haruka. It's okay. He's pretty. And then also, like, there's, like, this weird sequence where the, the, the uh, like, the PV is playing for Hayato's song. And then, like, he comes out of the sky and he and Haruka are in this black space and there's, like, these stars and stuff and they're dancing and floating in the air. Okay. Like, just, like, you know, like, that scene in Ratatouille, but, like, idol music. <laughs> Idle Ratatouille <laughs> confirmed. Idle Ratatouille confirmed. <laughs> oh boy. Yes. So I guess she's always liked music because she like her grandma taught her how to play piano and she liked piano, but this like focused her love of music to make it want to be her career. So mm -hmm. her goal is one day to write for Hayato, the idol. 
And Tomo remarks that Hayato, it's interesting that you like Hayato for his music because Hayato's mostly just been doing like comedy shows and like TV ads recently. I haven't heard him do any like good music, you know, he's, he's not known for his music anymore. And you're like, mm -hmm. hmm, I wonder what happened with Hayato. Anyways, that night, Haruka is in her dorm, you know, first day at school, and then a cat comes in. And it's a little black cat, right? No. And it comes up, and it steals Haruka's handkerchief. And she's like, oh no, come back, cat. I need to get that. So she runs out of her dorm. And, cat, and Cat's just like, da 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 larceny da 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 <laughs> <laughs> And that's why you always shut your windows, kids. That's why you always shut your windows. and Or at least have a screen, you know? So she mm -hmm. runs out, and she ends up at, like, this lake that has a gazebo. It kind of looks like that the gazebo lake thing in, like, the Pride and Prejudice movie, the one with Keira Knightley. I, I haven't seen it, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> and she's at the gazebo, and then she is, like, looking at how beautiful the night sky is, and then she hears a rustle from the bushes, and she turns, and it's Hayato. What? What? And then she's like, oh, Hayato? Why are you what here? a quinky dink Why are you at this academy? You're already a professional. You don't need to graduate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then Hayato says, "Actually, I am not Hayato. Dun dun dun. I am his twin brother. Whoa, Tokia. Oh, uh, the purple one. And that's that's who the edgy boy is. And when you were saying he had a twin brother, this is why it was funny to me. Ah, uh, I listen. I I saw the first like two or three episodes of this like." Nine years ago, I vaguely remembered that there was something about twins or whatever. I didn't remember exactly how it threw down, but that, okay, yes, now I remember this. Either way, uh, I, I forgot if he sings or not at this point, but Haruka's like, that's weird that he said he's his twin brother, because I would, could swear he's actually Hayato, not a twin brother. Put a pin on that. He's very convincing. Yeah, very convincing. All right, so we're going to move on. Episode two. So first episode is introduction episodes. Now the next series of episodes are going to be individual boys episodes, but it's kind of like individual boys falling in love with Haruka episodes because, of course, it We've is. very, very quickly gotten to the individual character episodes. Yes, and especially when it kind of is like, is it trying to be a romance? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, so they're in class, and uh, the teacher is kind of going over, like, all the things they're going to do, and the teacher also brings up that they are all going to have a big final audition concert, and what that means is, how, like, apparently it's a close to 50-50 split at the school between composers and idols, mm -hmm. and uh, towards, like, halfway through or the end of the year, all the composers are going to team up with an idol, like, they pick their pairs. And oh. these pairs are going to compose and write a song that's going to be their final performance. And apparently the biggest rule is there's no romance allowed between composers and idols. Aww. There shall be no smooching. No smooching. No, no canoodling. And I am almost certain that that's never, like, a concern in the anime. Like, it definitely is in the Otome games. But <laughs> not in, not at least in this season of the anime, and I think just kind of the way they set up the merchandising, I highly doubt that it's ever a girl. Well, boy yeah, romance. because if <laughs> if one of if she actually falls for one of the boys, then 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 how are we supposed to identify with her? Because what if we like the other boys? It's got to be an eternal will they won't they scenario. Also, star. What? Why? Why would they do a romance when you could just ship the boys together? <laughs> I knew that was coming. I'm like, when? That's the better thing to do. <laughs> when is Sarah gonna introduce her ships? And you can also ship the main character with her roommate. We're here now. You know that I, I vibe with that. Is like, yeah, all these pretty boys can go hang out with themselves. A uh, ponytail girl is my new favorite. Yeah, Bye. She, yeah, she's cute. She's not always in a ponytail. She, but she changes her hairstyle a lot. She's so cute, Tomo. I love her. She, the picture you sent me, she has a ponytail, and it's very cute. Yeah, she's very cute. So, they are all introduced to the fact that they're gonna have to have these pairs later on that they decide. But first, they're gonna have like a little practice run for that, and they are going to just practice writing a song, just 
as like a duo that is like they pick in their own class so like not throughout the whole school uh i mm-hmm. guess also before all this uh the teacher uh is like playing a piano song and then asks haruka being like oh hey you come up and read the sheet music and she comes up and she stares like she's at the piano and then she's like uh because apparently haruka never learned how to read music She's going to a music school and she never learned how to read music. Yeah, that's a big question of what this, like, audition process is to get into the super elite idol school. Yeah, that raises a couple questions. So essentially all of the classmates, except for obviously the boys who are in love with her, are like, wow, she can't even read music. She's from the country. She's not even, like, a real rich person who's at this idol school. So, yeah, that's that's all. So she gets a little sad about that. But then uh, at some point, Otoya comes up and talks to her and is like, hey, it's okay that you can't read music. I know you're really talented. I can tell because you're the main character and it'll be okay. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a sign taped to your back that says main character, please be nice to me. <laughs> please be nice to me. And then Haruka decides to study and work really hard and she learns how to read sheet music overnight. There you go. But yeah, she can she, she can sight read immediately. So good job, Haruka. The ultimate all nighter. The ultimate all nighter. And like all, while she's like practice like learning how to read and sight read sheet music, uh, like all the other like boys except for Tokyo, because at this point, anytime Tokyo shows up, he's all like, "Huh, who's this weird girl who only wants to talk about Hayato? I don't like her right Tokyo now." Tokyo being the Tokyo being the purple one. Yeah, he's the edgy one. Mm. So he's he's the only one who's like. Ugh. This girl. Don't like her. But, you know, you gotta have the enemies to lovers one somewhere, right? Like, if you have all these romance oh, options. so You gotta have one that plays hard to get. You gotta have at least one that plays hard to get. So, um, basically, uh, so Haruka learns how to read music. And so now she and Otoya are ready to do their, like, practice coming up with a song for their class thing. And mm-hmm. kind of the way it works is that the composers, they are only composing the music. And the idols sing the song and come up with the lyrics. Okay, I was wondering where the lo- the division of labor was going to come from. Because, like, it seems like the idols, all they would have to do is perform it. And it feels like the writing of the song is going to be a lot harder. But I guess if the idols also have to write the lyrics, then that makes sense. Yeah, so he's coming up with the lyrics. And... He is having trouble figuring out what his lyrics could should be. And so there's like a little montage where he goes to like all of the other boys being like, hey, what would you write lyrics about? And they all like have their little like, I would write lyrics about being flirty with ladies or I would have write lyrics about being a serious samurai. You know, like that, that's mm-hmm. a little more explicit, but it was it was pretty explicit. Right. So like you get a little mm-hmm. more one liners on what these boys personalities are, like what tropes they are. <laughs> Yep, you're getting a read on them based on their responses to this quiz question. About wh- what sort of song you would write. But yep. then, uh, uh, at the same time, Haruka is also having trouble because she's like, this is her first time really composing a song. Mm-hmm. And she's like, how do I write a good song? I don't know what to do. Uh, but then that night she goes to bed and a- the cat comes back. And in her dreams, uh, the cat leads to her to a scene with her grandma teaching her how to write music as a kid or, like, hum a tune. So she goes out to the Pride and Prejudice Lake and starts, like, humming the melody. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, this is a melody I got from that dream with the cat because of the grandma inspiration or something. And then coincidentally, <laughs> Otoya shows up. Oh, red hair boy is here. And he's like... Wow, that melody is amazing. I am so inspired now. I don't need any help on what to write for the lyrics for that song. I can do it immediately on the spot. So immediately on the spot, he starts singing. And then it kind of cuts to like a little montage of like them working together on the song. And overlaid is Otoya's single, like the, the song, him, him singing the song over it. So it's kind of a cute yeah. ending, so... At that point, they are they wrote their song together. Otoya learned how to play it. By the end of the montage, every time he looks at her, he's all blushy, blushy. So he's in love <laughs> because it's an Otome game. 
Of course. And Otoya route unlocked check mark. <laughs> also, just so you know, because it, it's based off of an Otome game, but like these plots are not the same as the Otome game. They just decided to go with Otome esque plots for the anime. Amazing. It's like, listen, you gotta play to the audience. You gotta play to the audience. And again, like the the general thing is, this episode is mostly about Otoya and Haruka bonding. And whenever he talks to other characters, it's either about the things he's doing. It's like a nega Bechdel test. Like, the boys only ever talk to each other about Haruka or, like, songs they're writing for or with Haruka. Absolutely incredible. Like, that's, like, most of their conversation. All right, episode three. This one is the Masato episode. So, Chihaya episode. But, boy. I. So, uh... Uh, Haruka is doing a great job in school. Like, all her teachers are like, wow, you're doing so much better now that you can actually read music. And we know it's not just that you didn't know how to play piano and got on here by some weird fluke. Um, uh, she, like, also plays piano in class. And I guess she gets complimented being like, wow, you, like, really played from the heart. We could tell how great of a composer you're going to be. So there's that. Incredible. Big Mary Sue energy. Foiling this, uh, Tokia is getting in trouble with his teacher. So Tokia is in a separate class from all the others, and his class is like the advanced class. And he's oh. getting in trouble because even though he's technically perfect in every single way, he his songs have no heart. <laughs> Which is like you're in, they're in a school. Like why are you failing him? <laughs> like I get. Well now, Sarah, you and I both went to art school, and That's you know true. how frustratingly subjective Ooh, that is. Oh, you're big. Okay, fair. This passes. You did act like you did this perfectly. This is amazing. I can find no place for you to improve. B minus. <laughs> so Haruka, <laughs> even though she's she's feeling like she's doing well, she's passing her test. Her teachers are praising her. All of her classmates, except for the boys who are in love with her, of course, are all like, wow, that Haruka, she's just cheating somehow, and she's just using, like, Otoya and all these other boys who apparently are friends with her to, like, gain an advantage, and she's, like, actually not that talented, she's just, like, a manipulative person. Can you spell jealous? Right? It's so mean. I love high school drama, and by love it, I mean hate it, absolutely. Oh, it's no good. So at some point during class, she goes up to the piano because the teacher tells her to. She goes to play her song, and then she just hears the class whispering about her. And then her hands start shaking. And then she's like, I don't know how to play music anymore. Like, my body is not working. And then she runs out of the classroom. And you're like, oh, no. No, <laughs> she's baby. She's, like, straight up being bullied. Like, not good. Baby, come back. Uh... So, like, at some point, like, Otoya, like, talks to the teachers, and the teachers are like, yeah, this is just how the industry is. We're not going to start stop the rumors. And it's like, wow. Oof. Oof. Right? It's harsh. Welcome to the real world, kid. You gotta suck it up. Uh, so, so Otoya's upset. The others in the class, so Masato is upset. Shio's upset. And Natsuki are upset. So those are the other ones in their class. Ren's in the advanced class or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. so she's upset. She runs out of the classroom and she ends up on like the rolling fields of the school. It's like there's sheep in because the background. Because of course the school has sheep at yeah. the school? Yeah, there's sheep. It's like, this is like the Bake Off set. Like, like the, the fields. <laughs> like there's, I'm just doing all these weird references today. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> I'm running on low sleep star. <laughs> so there's like rolling fields there's sheep in the background she's under a tree and she's like wow i'm so sad because i'm being bullied and the school isn't doing anything about it and then the little black cat comes up and he came and the little black cat the, uh, i'm how does that <laughs> fucking duck song go and he waddled away but he didn't he waddled towards her <laughs> Till the very next day. Bum 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 bum. bum, 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 bum. Well, a cat walked up to a composer student, and he said to the girl, who looked kind of sad, "Hey, bum bum bum. What's wrong with your eyes? It's kind of creepy." <laughs> so, so uh, the Haruka looks down at the cat, and she's like, first of all, I'm gonna name you Kuburu for whatever reason, and because you just asked so nicely, I'm gonna go to the store and buy you some grapes, like." That, that's my joke i don't know if you can feed cats grapes i don't think you should though. i don't think you can't no you definitely can't feed grapes to dogs so don't feed your I'm cat going grapes. To assume that the same is true of don't cats. feed ducks cat grapes either but the cat so she goes to the convenience store to buy the cat grapes 
Wait, are you are you just goofing on my earlier duck song bit, or does she actually go to the store and buy the cat grapes? She goes to the store to buy the cat food. <laughs> okay, so. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> is this gonna be a zombie land saga? Do not feed dogs fried squid. I mean, maybe scene. she's going to buy squid. But Sarah, Sarah, have we learned nothing from Zombie Land Saga? Do not feed dogs squid. Do not feed dogs squid. Or zombies. Let's let's not feed dogs squid, okay, kids? Uh so she goes to the store, and while she's at the store, she sees Masato. And Masato, like, comes up to her, and he's like, I, like, I really understand what's going on, and I am so, so sorry this is happening to you. And that's kind of nice for Haruka, because at this point, she just, like, had run out of the class and, like, had not talked to anybody since. So mm-hmm. she gets some reassurance from Masato. Uh, so she ends up going back to the school. She doesn't see the cat again. She does hear some saxophone in the distance. Uh, <laughs> And you learn that it is Ren who plays the saxophone. Of course so he the plays sexy the sexy guy instrument. plays the saxophone. And he's just blasting Careless Whisper careless across whisper the raising everywhere. field. <laughs> Does this raise my sex appeal? <laughs> so, uh, even though... Like, Masato, like, talked to her, and there's some sexy saxophone in the distance. Haruko's still really down. Sorry, Sarah, I, I need to interrupt for half a second. Uh-huh. My cat hated my saxophone <laughs> just now. Oh, <laughs> she no. is giving me the angriest look. Anti-sax cat. <laughs> she hates the saxophone impression, apparently. <laughs> no saxophone. So, so, she's still sad, so she goes to a piano i think in a practice room and she tries to play but no matter what she does she like can't play like she's just like it's blocked out this is very early on for her ptsd related art block right usually that doesn't come until the end of the first season but she's not an idol she's a composer she so she's like at the beginning of the process you know her timeline is different Mm -hmm. her timeline is a different character trope Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh so otoya because you know you friendship linked up with him last episode like notices how down she is and he's like i want to cheer haruka up so like there's this side plot where like he and shio and natsuki are like baking something for haruka but then you find out that natsuki is like the type of person where anything he bakes ends up being like poisonous because anime tropes oh no i know people well i know people like that in real life (laughs) oh no (laughs) (laughs) not poisonous but just like a little bit combustible maybe (laughs) terrifying Yep. But I guess, so that, that side thing's happening. So it's all, like, Otoya and Natsuki and Shio being like, Haruka's the best person in the entire world. Let's make a cake for her. Um, but Haruka herself is, like, struggling. So she's at the piano. She's having a hard time. She's in a practice room. And she's just crying onto the piano and goes, Every day I'm struggling. Exactly. And then while she's there struggling, Masada walks in. And the blue one. The serious one. Chihaya. The blue one. Okay. <laughs> yes. Chihaya walks in. Chihaya but boy. And uh, he talks... Boy Haya. <laughs> he talks about having a similar feeling to her about being so overwhelmed and not being able to play. Uh, because he, I guess he used to be really pressured as a child like by his family because he and also his roommate Ren come from like these big family corporation conglomerates and they're rich boys and you know have their own family estates and his only good memories as a child were playing piano with his butler at the time or his attendant or whatever his his nanny man Hmm. and so he goes up to the piano next to her and he just like uh plays like just like the melody of twinkle twinkle little star for her which is really mm-hmm. cute because it really is like it's like one of the very very introduction songs you learn uh, with like the Suzuki method. So like a very traditional yeah. Japanese learning. You learn Twinkle first. That's cute. And so she flashbacks to learning Twinkle with her grandma, and then so she starts playing with it. Twinkle, Twinkle, little star, with him like an octave down. So like for the first time, she's Aww. actually able to like yeah play the piano a little bit. That's cute actually i know it's really cute and so like like her hands are still shaking but then like he puts his hands over hers and being like oh you can do it it's okay 
Ganbate main character. And then it kind of keeps going where like uh, Masato is still playing like the just like the melody, but then she's doing like the the bass notes and the accompaniment. Oh, it's just really cute. Oh, I love that. No, this that's is, really cute. It's really really sweet. Like, oh, I feel like one of my gripes with the show is like I don't mind romance shows. What I don't like is like it switches every single episode. Which boy you're talking about? So, like, mm. there could be a really cute scene, and then it's, like, and then that's... There. And then it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> and then that's it, until, like, maybe a couple episodes towards the end, but then it's all the boys at once. So. Mm. But, yeah, it was really cute. And so then it, it's kind of Haruka coming past her, like, trying to play piano to please her classmates and more trying to play piano to, like, remember the joy of playing piano again, like, as a kid, which yep. is really cute. And then... um then you hear Masato's song for Haruka because he's like, you know, I actually came in here not to help you, just to help you play, but because there's something I wanted you to hear, and it is this song. And so he starts playing piano and singing. <laughs> well, he's not, he's not the saxophone one. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> he like pantomimes playing the saxophone. He's like, you like that? You like that? I made, I did, I learned how to do this for you. Oh, okay, my cat is once again glaring at me. She's like, do not say the word saxophone again. If you say the word saxophone, I will come over there and bite your feet again. <laughs> so, uh, so, so Masato sings a song while there's, like, a montage of, uh, like, them practicing together and Haruka and Masato both doing well in class. <laughs> And then later on, uh, they're at the lake after the song, and she's like, thank you for helping me get past this block. And then he's like, no, actually, thank you for helping me decide that I really need to go forward towards music and not go back into the, like, the place where I am just doing what my family wants me to do, because you really helped me also embrace like that feeling of being a kid playing piano again, which is also really Aww. sweet, yeah. Y'all. Social link. Oh. And then there's like a weird retcon flashback where you see like back in wintertime during like application period, you see like Haruka singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in a park with a bunch of kids and Masada walking by and you're like, that didn't need to be there, but okay. No, that's certainly, why can't we just have a cute moment because it's a cute moment and not because this was foretold <laughs> in the backstory that we already... didn't know about. It was already cute and it's not even like... Like, if it was a backstory, like, maybe, like, when they were kids they met, maybe? But this was, like, mm -hmm. three months ago, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't know. But that's fine. Whatever. Episode four! Episode four! This one is the Ren episode. Sexy sax guy. <laughs> so, it kind of opens up with, like, Haruka and Natsuki and... Otoya, they're all like dancing for Haruka and they're just doing like normal class stuff and like practicing. But in the distance, you see Ren and he's just like surrounded by fangirls and just constantly flirting. He sees Haruka and them dancing and he comes up to Haruka being like, Oh, hi, we've uh, been bonded since the day we met, I think he said. So, oof. Yeah. You know, and then there is, like, Oof. every time, like, he has, he talks, like, his theme in the background does have a little saxophone in it. Oh, good. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you, anime producers. Absolutely incredible. Uh, but, like, Masato's there, and he's, like, not onto this shit because, you know, he's already in love with Haruka after last episode. And he and mm -hmm. Ren apparently have known each other for a long time. And they were roommates. And they were roommates. It's true. Oh my god, they were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. Uh, their history, apparently, is they both knew each other because both their daddies were rich, and they used to go to, like, these fancy parties together, but then they would just, like, run away and, like, do goofy things and sing songs together. Nice. But at some point, they stopped being close friends. And this is all introduced at this episode at some point, but I'm introducing it now just to make it make more sense. Uh, okay. At some point, they stopped being close with each other, and Masato, his goal in the end, he went to the school to, like, kind of free himself from his family so he could, uh, um, like, fulfill his own passion of singing. And then when he came mm -hmm. to the school, that's when he saw Ren again. And he's like, oh, hey, it's that guy that I used to be friends with as a kid. So at some point, uh, you also hear 
or Haruka also finds out that, like, hearing all this backstory about Ren and Masato growing up, that, uh, just a side note, apparently Masato is only allowed to be here for a year. That's not brought up this season, might be brought up later. Okay. The main thing that's going on right now, though, is, and the reason why Masato starts talking about Ren, is that Ren apparently is doing really bad in school. Uh Uh-oh. He's to- he's so busy being sexy pretty boy that he's not studying him for his math test. Exactly, except it's an idol test. I don't think they do anything but idol stuff. These kids are going to be so bad at math. You got to learn how to do your idol math. You got to know your idol math. One, are you ready? Like, how are you going to count down <laughs> if you don't know your idol math? <laughs> Sarah... You have to stop being funny when I'm trying to drink water. I haven't even had this laptop for a year, and if I ruin it by snarfing water all Snarf. over it during our podcast, I'm gonna be mad. I claim victory. I'm so pleased. No, it's like every single time. <laughs> at least once an episode. You make a stupid joke that's too funny, and I have to laugh about it, and I've got a mouthful of water, and one of these days it is going to end my technology. If an episode ever cuts out, like, halfway through, we know what happens. Yeah, just like intermission. <laughs> this is the part where Starla snarfed water on her laptop and then had to frantically clean it up. So I forgot what happened, but Ren, Ren's been doing that at school. And uh, he apparently has this big assignment that he needs to turn in where he had to write lyrics for an idol song. I, maybe the same assignment that they had a few episodes ago. I don't know. A mystery. A mystery. And it's, like, bad enough to the point where, like, Ren's teachers, like, come out in the courtyard and are like, hey, you can just stop slacking off or, like, I will actually kick you out of the school. doesn't matter how rich your parents are. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, super serious. I don't care about your dad. Do your homework. Do your homework. <laughs> uh, so Masato eventually confronts him being like, why are you not doing your homework? You're like, you're not doing this work. I... Like, I've known you since we were little. I came here, and I'm working really hard, and I, I'm doing this so I can get away from my parents, and this is, like, a taste of freedom. Don't you want to have this taste of freedom yourself? And then Ren reveals that he was actually sent to the school by his dad because his parents think that becoming an idol is a great way to grow your family business. Wow. This is, like, the opposite of so many tropes. Yep, so... Being at idol school is actually his cage. <laughs> oh no, what a nightmare. You get to be a Idaru. I know. Uh, however, uh, you do also like to get a flashback of him like having a memory of like some like fancy dressed idol woman who looks suspiciously like related to Ren somehow. So you're like, hmm, there was an idol in his past. Uh, later that night, after all this confrontation of Masato yelling at Ren, being like, why don't you study harder, and the teachers yelling at Ren, being like, hey, if you don't turn into this homework, we're going to kick you out, uh, Ren is playing saxophone on the roof of the school. <laughs> you, okay, so Sarah, when you're editing this episode, I feel like you need to actually put that in there. Maybe, or maybe... Maybe opposite. Anytime I listen to that song, <laughs> I'll just put your noise in there. It's just it's just me doing my shitty it's saxophone impression. <laughs> but so they they hear the saxophone music, or or Haruka hears the saxophone music. You also notice that Masato and the cat notice the saxophone music happening, just you know, because. But Haruka hears this music and she follows the sound and she goes to the rooftop and she sees it's Ren. And she's like, wow, I didn't realize you played saxophone. (laughs) Hasn't she already seen him playing saxophone? I don't know if she's seen him. I think she's heard him, but I don't think she's seen him. Like, they might be nearby playing sax, but, like, her... Ah, gotcha. Yeah, you you as a viewer know, but I don't think Haruka knows. And so she's like, well, you've been playing saxophone just for fun up here, so it means that you actually really do like music. You love your sexy saxophone so much. Why can't you love being an idol? Being an idol. He's like, oh, little lamb, you came up to see me. And he, like, kind of moves forward like he's going to kiss her or something. And then Uh a paper falls out of its pocket. (gasps) And Haruka picks it up, and it looks like it's lyrics for the assignment. What? And she's like, what? You've been writing lyrics all along. I'm so relieved you won't get kicked out of the school. 
I'm really glad. And it seems like you actually do care about music. And then he's like, well, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's time for me to leave the school anyways, because it's all really boring. Being an idol is suffering. And then, like, Masato, like, <laughs> steps out, being like, I overheard this. And then again, this little, like, argument on why you should be or not be an idol, because drama. Mm -hmm. And then, like, Ren drama. grabs the paper that has his homework assignment on, and he rips it up. And then the wind blows and, like, sweeps it away. Because, of course, it does. This little paper, he rips them into a million pieces. And it's all, like, dramatic, right? Mm -hmm. And then Masato punches Ren. Like, legit. Yeah. <laughs> but it's off-screen. Like, you don't see the physical contact of the punch. It's all off-screen because you can't have boys actually punching each other in their idol show. Boo! Right? Show me the punch! And punch squad! They both walk off, like, separate angry. And then Hark goes like, well, that's awkward. I'm gonna go scour the school and look for your homework assignment. Oh, baby girl, don't! Don't put yourself out like this yep. for this dude. He's done nothing for you but be a creeper. Yep, absolutely nothing good. But yeah, so then there's like a little like quick montage of just like Haruka going around and like picking up little tiny scraps of paper from around the school. Like, Haruka! Girl, no. <laughs> no! Do not waste your time on this boy. He's a total chad. He does not deserve your attention. He's not worth it. And the next day, both Haruka and Ren are absent from their respective classes. Uh, Haruka is still looking for the papers. You! Oh, no. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. Yep. And Ren is just, like, under, like, the tree in that field with the sheep. And he is whistling a song. And then he remembers flashback. He has a memory of his mother. <laughs> and she was the woman in the flashback earlier. And apparently, she used to be an idol. And then what had happened is she was an idol. And then for some reason, she died. And then Ren's dad was upset either about her dying or just her in general and threw away all of the idol stuff, right? Being like, she's a bad person because she's not here to help you anymore. But Ren was able to keep hold of a cassette tape. And this cassette tape he listened to later, like baby Ren listened to in a park, and it was his mom humming a melody for him. And you're like, wow, that's actually really sad, but it's an Otome game and they always have sad backstories. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's sad. It's almost too sad right? where I'm just like, okay. Yep, yep, yep. So he's there and then he's like, remember this is happening and is like, well, you know, there is reasons for music to be okay or something. Music is, maybe being an idol isn't suffering. Isn't suffering. And then Haruka walks up and she starts reciting lyrics and she holds up and she has a scrap, the scrap of paper. And conveniently, because again, he, he broke it up into like 30 or 40 little pieces. And so she conveniently found all the pieces except for exactly the pieces that make the bottom right corner. Mm -hmm. So just big coincidence. She wasn't missing a gap in the middle there, I guess. But she <laughs> know mo she so she was able to recite almost all the she lyrics except for the very end. She could have played Mad Libs. <laughs> right? Maybe she's like, should. I couldn't find all of it, but I found most of it. And then I, I tweaked it a little. I had to kind of guess. Um, it's kind of like one of those Mad Libs games where there's blanks and then you have to fill them in by yourself. <laughs> I love you so much. I saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, please don't quit. We'll find the last of the lyrics and you can turn in for class and it'll be okay. And he's like, please don't do that. But she's like, I'm going to do it anyways. Because fuck you. And then she like ropes in all the other boys. Right now I say other boys. I mean everyone but Tokia. So she mm -hmm. gets in like Masato and, and Otoya and Shio and Natsuki. And they go all around the campus and they look for the last few pieces. But the bell rings at the end of the school day where Ren was supposed to turn in his assignment. And they haven't found the end of the song. Womp womp. But then over the loudspeaker... Ren's voice is says, hello, little lamb, can you hear me? Like, across the whole school. Ugh. Because, of course. Oof. Oof. And then he says, it's showtime. <laughs> and he sings his, well, actually, first he breaks out his saxophone and starts playing it. <laughs> and he starts singing his idol song interspersed with him playing saxophone and also saxophone music playing in the background. You hear my ooh, your own shit today. 君だけを見ていた
And every every other student on campus is just like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Who broke into the loudspeaker room? Ren song is just careless whisper. Just careless whisper. Just the whole thing. <laughs> episode five. Hey, episode five. So episode five is a Shio episode. Okay. So the episode begins and Haruka is just like sitting by some trees studying and then all of a sudden she hears like a scream and a thump and Shio falls out of a tree. And she's like, oh hey, that's weird. Good to see you, Shio. Do you need any help with you being in that tree and falling out of it? And then Shio unexpectedly like, because normally he's like the spunky one, but he's not like the mean one. But then he gets like mm-hmm. super upset and he's like, don't you dare tell anyone I was here. And he like runs away. Okay, emo boy, whatever. And then Haruka's like, wow, that's weird. Well, that was odd. (laughs) That was weird. So later on, there's gossip running around, and apparently everyone's talking about how one of their teachers, who's also an idol, is going to be a star in like an upcoming action movie. Mm -hmm. And apparently this teacher, this is like what he does, is he just stars in really weird action movies. In addition to this teacher being in these like roles this upcoming role apparently there's an opening for a side character and they are encouraging young people to audition and then natsuki sees this and natsuki's like oh my god we have to tell shio and you find out that apparently shio's favorite actor slash idol in the whole world is this teacher of course and the and shio's like don't worry i already know about the audition natsuki you don't have to be like all weird crazy about it I'm already planning on auditioning, but there's a problem. I can't dance. No, it's (laughs) the fact that this is an action movie about climbing the side of a mountain, and I am afraid of heights. Ah, that was going to be my second guess. Yeah, so then it's just like shenanigans for the most part in the episode of them trying to like get them to not be afraid of heights, etc, etc. Um... But essentially it all fails, you know? And she was just like, wow, this is the worst day of my entire life. And then the principal comes out. Sarah, Sarah, is he scared of heights because he's the short one? Oh, no. Actually, they explain why he's scared of heights. Okay, tell me. <laughs> okay, so so then the principal comes out because the principal's been watching this whole thing. And he's like, hey, I am going to help you overcome your fear. So the principal takes them all to the principal's office and starts to hypnotize Shio. La- okay, describe this hypnosis for me. There's like a metronome. It's like tick tock, tick tock, and it's like you're falling asleep. You're going deeper asleep, and then it's like you're going. You're this. You're like four years old. You're pretend. You're on the Ferris wheel. Are you scared yet? Right. So like they find. Mm-hmm. They track down the exact moment when he became afraid of heights, and the reason why he's afraid of heights is so Shio and Natsuki. So Natsuki, the Genki Golden Retriever one, and Shio, the mm-hmm. spunky one. They were childhood friends also because they knew each other through violin competitions when they were growing up. And apparently Natsuki was always a little bit too clinky, like a little too golden retriever with Shio. And mm-hmm. there was a scene where he was trying to chase Shio and catch him in a giant net. Oh, like an Animal Crossing character. Like an Animal Crossing character. And Shio was so scared, he ran and ran and ran, and he ran up to the top of a tower, and then he was trapped to either get captured by Shio or fall out of a window. And then he backs up and starts falling out of the window. And he's Oh my god! <laughs> he's thankfully rescued before he, like, dies. But uh, he... All of a sudden, he wakes up, and he remembers this, and he looks at Natsuki, and he's like, you, you did this to me. <laughs> you did this. You did this. But uh, essentially, Natsuki is like, hey, did that really happen? I kind of remember that happening. I don't remember. <laughs> so it's, like, not serious for him, so that's the gag. And then, uh, then, then it cuts to later, and you're like, okay, so did he overcome his fear? And so all the characters are like, hey, are you going to audition? And she was like, actually, no, I'm not going to audition. And they're like, why not? And then it's like, it turns out that they were hiring a girl actress to play the little sister character. Oh, womp womp. Womp womp. And then there's like a gag at the end where they, like, Natsuki dresses up in a little, like, you know, like a very frilly, like, EGL style outfit. And then, like, the teacher runs by and is like, wow, you'd be perfect. You should audition for this role. So... (laughs) That was that nice. episode. It, it was very much a gag episode, but it was cute. 
Episode 6, Natsuki's episode. Ta -da. So, at the beginning of this episode, you find out that Haruka is going to a Hayato concert. Remember, Hayato is the guy oh. who looks like Tokia and has the poster in her room. And she is so excited. She's never seen Hayato in person before, though. And now she's finally going to get to see the boy of her dreams. She's finally going to get to see the boy of her dreams. So she, at some point at the very beginning of the episode, she's all excited about going to this Hayato concert, and she's walking down the hall, and she bumps into Tokia. Tokia being the one who looks like Hayato and also the edgy boy. Yep, the purple one. Up to this point, there's been, like, small scenes of, like, Tokia just, like, generally not liking Haruka. Like, being like, why does she seem like she's so nice? I bet there's something about her that's not great, or I bet she only wants to get close to me because of she wants to be close to Hayato. Uh, but she bumps into Tokia, and uh, I guess one of the flyers for the the Hayato concert like falls out of her bag, and like he hands it back to her. And then she's like, "Are you gonna be at your your brother's concert?" And he's like, "Ignore." And then he walks away, but like he like has like this limp, and you're like, "Oh, something's wrong with Tokia." Oh, oh. Uh, also, up to this point, all the other characters are like, Haruka, are you sure you're going to be okay going to the concert on your own? Don't get lost. I know you're not used to the big city. Be careful around those old ladies. Careful around those old ladies. So day of the concert, Haruka gets lost. Of course. Of course, immediately. And she's running around. She's at a, a train station. She's like, I don't know which way to go. And then she sees out the corner of her eye. She sees Natsuki. And he's writing, like, composing something. Mm-hmm. And she runs up to him and she's like, oh, Natsuki, thank you for your help. We love you so much. Just please help me. And uh, Natsuki, instead of being normal, friendly golden retriever, just looks up at her and glares. Oh. And you're like, oh, what's going on? And then some, like, random dudes walk by and they're just, like, laughing and jumping and talking. And one of them, like, throws away, like, an empty cup and it lands on Natsuki. And then Natsuki, like, rages. Like, he would like to rage. And he gets up and he <laughs> runs up to them. And he starts, and he, like, punches the wall, and he starts confronting these boys, being like, why did you interrupt me? I was busy composing. Blah, 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 angry, angry. And then out of nowhere, Shio comes up and puts Natsuki's glasses on him. Because up to this point, Natsuki wasn't wearing glasses. Oh. Natsuki goes back to normal. Because <sighs> Natsuki has this Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde sort of thing going on where he is a completely different person when he's not wearing his glasses. Are you serious? I, that's what his character quirk is? That's what his character quirk is. Is He is Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, but glasses and nice boy versus angry boy. Well, okay. You know what? I guess I could see this like... I can't fucking see without my glasses, you son of a bitch. Don't throw shit at me. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, is... So, his form without glasses, Shio calls... So, his name is Natsuki. His form without glasses is called Satsuki. And Satsuki can remember things that happen with Natsuki, but Natsuki completely blacks out when he's Satsuki. And he does not remember anything that happens when he does not have his glasses on. <sighs> I'm trying to piece together a joke in my brain... That combines this scenario with the whole Scooby-Doo, I can't see without my glasses <laughs> line. I can't Shio without my glasses. <laughs> uh, but Shio is apparently the only one who knows about this quirk or whatever. And uh, so whenever somehow Natsuki takes off his glasses, Shio, as soon as he can, tries to put glasses back on him or he goes completely berserk. All right. Um, but the only thing is apparently when... Natsuki is not wearing his glasses and he's Satsuki. The one benefit is he becomes very good at composing and being an idol. <laughs> so that's like the one benefit. Oh my god, this is a lot. It's a whole lot. So like complete personality change. Like very, again, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Uh, there's like a little wow. bit of shenanigans while like there's like, oh, uh, my glasses are fogging up. Let me take them off. And like, oh, I sneezed and my glasses came off. So like there's stuff like that. Anyways, it turns out Haruka is going to this theme park for this concert because the concert's at a theme park because Hayato mostly does, like, jokey things for little kids nowadays. And mm -hmm. Natsuki is also going to the theme park because there's the concert is apparently a joint thing with, like, this merch character, Pio, who's just, like, a little bird thing. Okay. And so they're like, we'll go to the concert with you because Natsuki wanted to get this merch, and Shio's going to the concert to make sure Natsuki's glasses don't come off. 
Which is like, does, it, does he go with you everywhere? <laughs> like, is, is, is this required? He, he's, the, he's the seeing eye dog. He's the seeing eye, seeing eye idol. The seeing idol. Oh. However, they enter the park and there are storm clouds brewing. And you're like, oh, uh oh, stuff's going to happen. Dun, dun, dun. Spooky times. Spooky times. Meanwhile, so there's a bunch of people in the, the audience for the concert, right? So big stage there at theme park. It's mostly like moms and their kids, right? But big, big, giant audience yep backstage hayato is actually like really busy working on something and the manager hayato's manager comes in and he has like glasses and like kind of flippy brown hair he looks kind of generic to be honest and he's like hey make sure you don't work yourself out you seem like really busy recently and really exhausted but like this is your job so make sure you focus and so then hayato's like yeah sure fine whatever and he goes on stage and start singing like this like song that like in mood is very different from like the song you saw Hayato sing in that flashback with Haruka. Like it's like very like upbeat, genki, shiny, mm-hmm. glittery instead of like ballad I love you, oh music, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and then Haruka is like shocked and she's like, Wow, this feels different than the Hayato I know. It it doesn't even feel like like the way he did before. And so she's kind of sad about that. He's a fucking sellout. He's a fucking Damn sellout. It. And then uh, Hayato himself is like not really into it. And then he he accidentally drops his microphone. <gasps> and there's like a feedback <gasps> noise. And then he's just, everything's quiet. And the crowd's like, boo, 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 boo. And then while that happens, Natsuki, because he has his glasses on, so he's good boy golden retriever, is like, I'll go and I'll help Hayato retrieve this famous, like, this famous ah. idol of Nevermelt. I'll help him retrieve his microphone. And while he runs forward... Because I am the golden retriever, and that's what I do. It's my job. And then as he runs forward, his glasses fall off. Oh, no. And then someone steps on him in the crowd, and it begins oh, to rain. Oh, boy. And then, you know what happens when there's rain at an idol concert star? Lightning. <laughs> and the power goes out. And so... Natsuki, power is out, lightning struck, crowd is slightly dispersed because of the rain and power outage and lightning, jumps on stage and starts yelling at Hayato, being like, why did you sing such a heartless song? Like, it's so insincere. Uh, And then I wrote down this quote directly. This was a translation. Uh, Mm -hmm. You're bathed in light, but your feelings are shrouded in darkness. I should know I'm Natsuki's shadow. Listen to my song. And then, uh, and then on stage at this concert for this famous idol, it has this look being like, "Are you are you gonna let me sing?" And then Hayato is like, "Yeah, sure, go ahead, sing here at this concert." This is a lot. And then Natsuki starts singing his song. And and then the other weird thing that happens on top of this is apparently this performance was broadcast on TV, and even though oh the, no, even though the power's out. Somehow it's still on TV and everyone back at the dorm is watching Natsuki sing at this Hayato concert. Convenient. It's like a rocky ballad. It's very dramatic as expected. But in the end, uh, what happens is that uh, Haruka ends up also trying to sneak onto stage and like put the broken glasses on Natsuki's um, face. But then, like, right before she gets him on his face, uh, uh, Natsuki, like, grabs her arm and starts, like, going in for a kiss. Oh. And then, like, I know. And you're like, whoa, what's going to happen? What is it with the blonde boys in this show? Well, I guess show's not like that. But then she closed her eyes and she's like, I know Natsuki wouldn't be this cruel. He's not like that. He's not red. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I mean, she doesn't say that. But, you know, that's what she's thinking. It is implied. And then Shio pops up from behind and, like, puts, like, some character glasses on him, like, P.O. character glasses on him, and then he's immediately back to normal. Wait, so it could just be any pair of glasses? It could be any pair of glasses. My god, anime boys. I cannot handle this. And then at the very end, Haruka, like, trips on some wiring on stage, and then Hayato rescues her and, like, like, like grabs her before she lands. And then when she falls, she notices that Hayato's foot is wrapped in bandages. And then she remembers Tokyo flinching and, like, limping earlier. 
And then she's like, wait a second. Hold the fuck up, boy. Hayato is not Tokyo's twin brother. They're the same person. What? Okay, I actually, I actually didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like, well, it's kind of disappointing that there isn't a brother, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that would have been more interesting. <laughs> but yeah, sure, fine. But yeah, also, so that that was pretty much the episode. One thing I'd like to note is, like, I feel like, like, that probably, like, if this was an actual idol thing, that probably was, like, the end of Natsuki's career, right? Like, idols have been canceled yeah. under, like, less thing like lesser things significantly <laughs> less things than that yeah yeah like going on stage yelling at a popular idol singing his own song by interrupting a broadcast and then like almost kissing a like a random girl <laughs> how did he have the backing track for his song yeah and that's a good question well there's a band there and the, some, he, somehow he's like can i use your band and somehow they knew what to play <laughs> amazing yep so, you know, that's how that one worked. Sarah, the band was in on it. The band was in on it. Idolluminati. Oh! oh! Episode 7. So now we got past the other boys who already liked Haruka. It is time for Tokyo. So, it is still raining. So, like, it was raining last episode. The next episode continues. It's still raining. And... Haruka is doing in class, good in class, and she's like, I should be happy, but there's something really serious that bo- that's bothering me, and that thing is Tokia. And that, and she's all upset because she realizes there's something up with Tokia because he is definitely Hayato. He's not telling them. He's not singing good like she, he used to. And also, there's all these rumors that he's getting like criticized by his teachers for not having like enough sincerity and heart when he sings his songs. What's wrong, emo boy? I know, he's so upset. And so she's also like, and then why would he even bother to pretend he's own tw- he's his own twin? Like, this is a very weird thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, there's like a point at the beginning of the episode where, like, Haruka sees him from afar and walks up to him, and then he just is like, don't talk about it, and, like, walks away, like, dramatically, and you're like, wow. So dramatic. So edgy. What an edge lord. He's so edgy. Whatever, Sasuke. Whatever, Sasuke. <laughs> See, he kind of has Sasuke here. So maybe that's how you know he who he is. He's like Sasuke, but if he got rained on and then didn't have the little duck butt hair on the back. Exactly. Um, the other thing that's happening with Tokia is his manager's knowing, sh- noticing that he's showing up late and exhausted and tired. And you kind of get to, to realize that his manager doesn't realize he's going to this school. Oh, jeez. Which is not a great situation to be in. Sarah, Sarah, (laughs) Uh Sarah, a shocking realization. This man is anime Hannah Montana. He's anime. Oh my god! (laughs) It's anime Hannah Montana! But he doesn't even bother with a wig. He's just literally the same person. He doesn't have the best of both worlds because life is going really bad right now. Oh no, oh this no. emo lad. It's... Anime Montana, what are you going to do about this? Sasuke Montana. Anna Montana. <laughs> Anna, Anna Montana. Because it's anime, Hannah Montana, Anna Montana. Anna Come Montana. on, I make the jokes. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Woo. Woo. <laughs> um, so basically, so he's doing bad at work and at school and then you also find out that because he's doing so bad at school he's being demoted from the like fancy s tier class to the normal class that haruka and all the other boys are in oh no he's gonna be dropped down into the class with all the normies yeah and apparently if he does even worse he might fail out of the school Uh stupid idol failing out of idol school why don't you go back to your job of being an idol um, Which I assume would it's what would happen if you dropped out of the school for being right? an idol. You could just go back to, you know, being an idol, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right? Like, hmm. Um, <laughs> though, it, though it is mentioned, I think the, the point they also get at in this episode is that every time uh, Hayato, so Tokia as Hayato, is like, hey, what kind of jobs are we go- am I going to have next? I hope they're singing. They're always like, no more singing, just variety shows and all your songs are gonna be like these ones that aren't from the heart so he's like i just want to sing 
So he's Chihaya. So he's also Chihaya. God damn it. That was the one thing that was keeping these two blue haired boys separate. But now they're both Chihaya? God damn it. I know. It's really. <gasps> There's two. Chi- I have two Chihayas. <laughs> two Chihayas? <laughs> There's an obscure okay, idol okay, reference. No, we, we, to, we need to pause and talk about the two Chihayas video. Okay, well, no, it's not two Chihayas, it's three Chihayas. It's three Chihayas. If you are a fan of Idol Master, or even if you aren't, this is still funny. Go on YouTube, look up three Chihayas, and like the the thumbnail is just like a like sky with trees. It is the funniest freaking video it's you really will funny. ever see in your life. And I have three. Chihayas. <laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll put it on our Discord. <laughs> For sure. We should. Okay, yeah, join our Discord. <laughs> Link is on our website <laughs> where chihayas. we will show you three Chihayas. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Chihaya I'm, too. Sarah, I'm just gonna be thinking about three Chihayas for the entire rest of this episode. <laughs> I need you to like go inside three of chihayas. my mind palace, and j- you will just hear the auditory sensation of three Chihayas being played on loop. I thought that's what you always had in your mind palace playing on loop. <laughs> I mean, listen, you're not wrong. I'm looking up three Chihayas right now. <laughs> Three Chihayas. Yes, it's the first video. Yay. Okay, I was wrong. The thumbnail is just like three figurines of Chihaya on a table, and they're all like gesturing dramatically at each other. And uh, Sarah, Sarah, uh-huh. do you want to know? Guess how many views it has? Six point nine thousand. Whoa! Nice. Uh, nice. <laughs> I'm just gonna drop this in the Discord with no context Please and see, do. and and then everybody who's in the Discord before this episode goes up will get a little snack. He'll be like, "Oh, that's the context for this, I guess." Yep. <laughs> so Chaya too uh, is sulking. It's raining, and he's walking in the rain at night. And Haruka is in her dorm, and she looks out the window and she sees sulking Chihaya too, aka Tokia, aka Hayato. <laughs> But Sarah, who's Chihaya 3? We gotta have three <laughs> Chihayas minimum. We have one we have one in the living room, one in the bedroom, and one in the bath. Where's the bath Chihaya? Where's the bath Chihaya? I think this is the bath Chihaya because it's raining and he's all in wet. He's oh all in water. confirmed. Yo. So she runs out and he is standing out by that Pride and Prejudice Lake spot where they met the first time as Tokyo. Mm-hmm. And uh uh, he's having like random flashbacks of like kids asking him to sing and you're like wow there's some sad story back here behind this um, and then the rain starts slowly stopping and he starts singing and then the clouds clear as he starts singing so you're like wow this means he's singing good because he can control the weather the Chihaya is very powerful the Chihaya song is very powerful <laughs> and the song he's singing is the same one that inspired her to be a composer of course. And she runs towards him and she's like, that's the song you saved me with. And she's like, it was you after all. And she's like, hey, oh, why did you do all of this? And he's like, it's because this was the only way I could sing because I am Chihaya. <laughs> uh... Everybody go watch Idol Master 2011 after this. <laughs> Same year. Same year, same anime oh, season. Star! Idol- star! What? Chihaya what? is the third Chihaya! <laughs> <laughs> Idol Illuminati! Confirmed! We solved it! We have solved it! Chihaya was the third Sarah. Chihaya this whole time. <laughs> Ch- Maybe the real Chihaya was the Chihayas we met along the way. <laughs> I love, I love my favorite anime characters, Chihaya, Chihaya, and Chihaya. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love this fucking thing. People bit. are gonna like Google like Chihaya Uda no Prince Sama being like, which character no. is this? <laughs> it's all it's all three of them. It's all, all three, three of them. Chihayas. All three Chihayas. Sarah, <laughs> we've unlocked it. Three oh. points on a triangle. Oh Three Chihayas confirmed. Confirmed. (laughs) Wow. 
<laughs> oh boy. Episode's basically over. Uh, the series is I, over. I mean, I think we're done. I think the <laughs> podcast is over. I think we could just cut it off here oh and God. like we've listen, we've solved it, okay? Well, here's the thing, we would solve it, but Chihaya three. Bath Chihaya. He's still really sad. <laughs> Purple Chihaya. Purple Chihaya is still really sad. What is wrong, Purple Chihaya? Because she's like, wow, you just sang that song so good. Why can't you sing that good in class? And then he's like, well, that's Hayato's song. I want to sing as Tokia, and I can't sing that good because I am not that good anymore. Or something. Sulk, sulk, angry, angry. Sad. And then she's like, oh, you know, I actually went through something like that. And she, like, starts going through what happened in Masato's episode. And then he's like, no, this is different. And then he's just, like, walks away. And you're like, oh, what happened? What happened first, Chihaya? I feel like, listen, I feel like actual Chihaya should be Chihaya number one. Yeah, she is she's the, the OG one. Chihaya. No, he, he's Chihaya three, for sure. He's Chihaya three. But he's also back because Chihaya. I have three. Chihaya's. Hey, Sarah, you, you know how sometimes you say a word too many times and then it stops being a word in your mind? <laughs> Chihaya. Yeah, that's, that's what's happening to <laughs> me right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Chihaya, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. So, uh... What is Chihaya? No one knows. No one knows. So, end of this episode, the very last thing is you find out that their class is going on a trip to... The president's, or the principal, sorry, not the president, the principal's private island. And the point of this trip is they are going to find their partners for the final graduation concert. So, beach episode. So, beach episode. There it is. So, this episode, Star, Mm -hmm. it starts like a normal beach episode and then it goes places. Are you ready? I am Lady Hajime. (laughs) so they go to the beach resort and everyone's all excited because it's like wow we're at a resort but also we're gonna meet our partners for the final graduation concert but also no romance tee hee um her roommate tomo apparently uh already has a composing partner it's the person that she was like assigned during their classroom like practice composing thing Mm -hmm. so Apparently, Haruka doesn't have a specific person that she's going to partner with. And in the back of her mind, she's like, hey, but what if I partner with Tokia? Maybe I can write something that will inspire him to sing again. And also, he's Hayato, who also inspired me. So, hey, that'd be really cool, right? Mm-hmm. Um, however, like, first day, Otoya, red hair boy, walks up on the beach and he's like, Haruka, I pick you to be my partner. Haruka, I choose you. Haruka's like, uh, and he's like, you don't have to say anything right now, but just know I'm going to write you down for my form and runs away. And you're like, oh. Whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, <laughs> and also, like, in turn, like, all the other boys, like, talk among themselves. Like, do you know who you're going to partner with? And they're like, I have a pretty good idea of who I'm going to partner with. And you as the audience member are like, I have a pretty good idea who you're going to partner with, too. <laughs> um, the rest of the beach episode, like, the beach part is just, like, beach times. There's a lot of male presenting nipples. You know, oh, just beach time. Can't post that on Tumblr. Mm -mm, Not on Tumblr. But then the rest of the episode happens. Okay, I'm ready. And that night, lay it on me. The end of this episode, you meet a secret boy. (gasps) Is this my boy? Sarah, is this my boy? Is this the green leafy one? That night, Haruka is on this private island, and then all of a sudden, the cat is there. The cat that she's friends with and sees almost every episode when something musical happens. Uh Uh-huh. And the cat, she's like, wow, you came over here somehow. I wonder how that happened. And the cat has, like, this green aura around it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 She starts, like, commiserating with the cat, being like, I really want to help Tokyo, but I don't know how. I want to inspire him. And then the cat runs off. And then Haruka follows the cat into the woods and ends up at, the, like, these ancient ruins. Okay. And she doesn't see the cat anymore. But instead, she sees a shirtless boy. Okay. And it is the green one. <laughs> My leafy greens, he's here. I thought he wasn't in this season. I know, he's the secret boy. The secret romance candidate. I kept it secret till now. Gasp. So he is Cecil, 
Uh, he I love him. He has darkish skin. Mm-hmm. He has, like, shaggy, brown, very generic hair. He seems happy. He's a good boy. Also, a cat. Listen, <laughs> I know... I know absolutely nothing about this character, but I do. The only thing I know about this character is that he is best boy. Like he's adorable. He's very cute. I know absolutely nothing about him. I just know that he's cute, <laughs> and also a cat boy apparently. Yes, it is implied that he is the cat, and he introduces himself as Cecil, and he is a prince of a country very far to the west. He says, and he says, okay. "Haruka, I have met you before, <laughs> a long time ago." in a place like in a different planet like on a different galaxy so a long long time ago in a galaxy uh, uh, very far away we were soulmates uh okay mm, and uh, i led you here because this island is like the home to like the soul of music or like uh, ancient got people who worship music or something and he, like, takes out, like, these, like, flowers. He's like, these flowers have bloomed here since these ancient people, and they inspired them to help them write songs. And also, I'm hey. in love with you because we were in love in a past life. Hey, Sarah, remember how I said I was ready for the second half of this episode? Yeah. Turns out I wasn't. Okay, but you are more ready for this than apparently what happens with Cecil in the Otome game, because I read up on it. Uh, oh? <laughs> yeah, it's Hello? like something about like sata- satanic cults and like being Whoa! here to like, get rid of demons, etc, etc. So this is a lot more tame. So feel. So they went with the Sailor Moon route instead of the... They went with the, the Sailor Moon um, route. <laughs> supernatural route. Uh, so... He starts singing to Haruka, and it's like this like firefly sky thing, and it's like a love song. So he sings his love song to Haruka. How does Haruka react to this situation? She's like, wow, this is amazing. I'm so inspired. Oh my god. Yeah, it's very much Girl. like... Girl. Head empty, no thoughts. Yeah, this is good. This is fine. <laughs> head empty, eyes empty, eyes no empty. thoughts. <laughs> All empty. I didn't realize that Molly Ma Critical Role was in this anime. Ayo! <laughs> Topical! Uh, so, yeah, and there's like this, like fancy big wall and it's like this is like watched over the music idols for generations and you're like hmm the wall um Uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh -oh. you you know what else Uh -oh. you know what else a1 pictures animated it's 22 Uh 7 Uh oh Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. illuminati confirmed (laughs) is the illuminati real the illuminati might be real and your green boy might Uh be the wall or related to the Uh wall Oh, leafy greens. Uh-oh. So, anyways, Haruka wakes up. Wait, wait. Hmm. And she's like, oh, that must not have really happened. But then she looks mm. in her hands, and she has the flower from the ancient muses that Cecil gave her. And she's like, hmm, maybe it was real after all. Hmm. Uh, but she woke up, like, right before dawn, and conveniently... Like, down at the beach, outside of her beach house, she sees Tokia standing on the beach, looking out at the waves. What's wrong, Emo Chihaya? What you looking at, buddy? And Chihaya Montana. And then... (laughs) And then, uh... (laughs) I can't take it, Sarah! Chihaya Montana! Chihaya Montana! And then Chihaya Montana apologizes for being such a dick to her, which, good on him. And he talks about his story, and apparently he got in a car accident. But it was actually while he was already Hayato. And the kids he was remembering were when he was uh, in the hospital recovering from his car accident. (laughs) He was laying there in bed, and then he starts hearing... A little anime boy starts singing Amazing Grace in English. And he follows the noise. Amazing Grace. It's kid. How sweet oh. the sound. And okay. then he stumbles upon this sickly child in the hospital. And then he also starts singing Amazing Grace with this child. And 
This child singing in the hospital inspired him so much. That's how he made that one song that Haruka felt had real heart and soul in it. And there's just like montages of all these sick kids and helping them sing, and they're all singing Amazing Grace together. And then Haruka's like, wow, that backstory is so sad and so inspiring. I want you to sing for me. I hope I could be your composer for the final audition. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, and then also, like at the very end of the episode, uh, Ren also asks her to be his the composer for his audition concert, and she's like, "Wow, this is surprising. <laughs> There's all these boys that like me. Wow, what do I do with all these boys? I can't hold all these boys." So yeah, so this episode starts out kind of normal goes completely weird in the middle and then it ends completely normal (laughs) so there's that episode all right episode nine we're getting towards the end so now we have had all of the boys' individual episodes including the secret seventh boy Mm -hmm. haruka is back at school they're all back at school and tokyo by the way he's like back in class and he's singing great so apparently haruka Rem- helping him remember the kids in the hospital made him sing good again mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. um but now haruka's back in school and apparently all of the boys except for tokia at this point have request cre- requested haruka to be the composer for their audition oh yep and they all like are separately being like wow i hope haruka picks me i hope she picks me uh She's like, wow, teachers, what should I do? And the teachers are like, you got to pick someone. And she's like, what if I can't choose one person? And she's like, well, if you don't pick anyone, then you're out of the school. And Haruka's oh, like, no. how do I choose just one when there are five boys that love me and one boy that is not in love with me, but that I personally want to write music for? What do I do when best boy won't notice me? And then she... Like, like, so she's doing all of her worrying thing, and then there's, like, little, like, things of all the boys, like, talking to each other or, like, musing to themselves about how much they love Haruka and how much they love Haruka's songwriting. So just a lot mm-hmm. of how mm-hmm. much I love main, um, main character. Wow, I am in love with main character. I have no thoughts about anyone else in this show but main character. Good. Yeah, so that that's love it. pretty much the gist of episode nine. It, it was mostly just a lot of them thinking about Haruka. So I didn't write a lot of it down because they're just in love with her. Great. So episode 10. At this point, everybody in the school knows that five boys, most of them like the most popular idols in the school at this point, have all requested Haruka for the final graduation project. And apparently this has absolutely never happened before. Wow. Absolutely never. And so, like, she's like, I don't know what to do. It's not easy for me because I am friends with all these boys and they say they are in love with me or something. Except they don't, but, you know, they they, they, yeah. they all apparently are. And she's like, I don't want to make any of them sad. And then also she's, like, wistfully looking at Tokia being like, but it'd be really cool if I could write for my, like, the person who inspired me. For um, my true best boy. For my true best boy. Gia Montana. <laughs> I can't believe that this is his name now. This is his name now. Who, Tokia? Whomst? Tokia I think whomst? you mean Chihaya Montana. Chihaya Montana. You get the best of both worlds. Sorry, that was amazing. Um, so, anyway, the deadline to choose the graduation partner is, like, fast approaching. And Haruka knows, like, if she doesn't choose a single boy... She and apparently all the rest of them also are just, like, going to fail their final audition, which is like, wow, that's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. And then Haruka is, like, like, sad, and then she starts thinking back to her time with Cecil, and she thinks about, like, oh, he was talking about, like, all this community of people who worship the muses of music, and wow, wait, this is an idea. And then the next day, all of the boys get a letter from Haruka. And they all end up in a lesson room. And there's tension because they're all like, wow, we thought this letter was special for us. Why do we all have letters? Why are we all here? And then Haruka walks in and she's like, hey, guys, I know you all requested me to be, you know, your 
uh, partner for this graduation concert. Oh, actually, something important I forgot. Tokia Chihaya Montana actually at the end of the episode requested her too. So all six boys want to be your partner. Oh boy, yeah, all six boys. So so here's here's the thing here. I feel so. You said that it's split about fi- evenly fifty fifty between like composers and idol students. Yeah, I feel bad for the five composer students who are apparently now the ones who get picked last for Idol Dodgeball. Right? Or maybe they just <laughs> collaborate and have, like, the most overcomposed, overproduced song. I don't know. <laughs> Tag team. Who needs Idol? No, Sarah, here's what they do. Vocaloid producers. Oh, my God. There you go. <laughs> and they, then they Hatsune need... Miku was born. They don't need real human idols. They have the superior Hatsune Miku idol. Yep. Uh, so she's, so Haruka walks in, she's like, hey, all six of you, I actually couldn't decide on one of you, so I was thinking, what if instead I am your, the composer for all six of you instead? And they're like, you can't do that legally. And she's like, I wanted to write this, and I wrote this group song for all of you, and she hands it out, like the sheet music for it. And then there's, like, instant conflict, right? So, like, Otoya is, like, because he's, the, you know, the good boy redhead. And he's all like, okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll do this if it makes you happy. But, like, some of the others are like, well, you know, this actually really sucks because we thought you, like, specifically chose us. And it makes it feel like we're second rate or, like, less than all these other guys. Yeah. And then Haruka's like, no, that's not what I meant. I, I really was, like... I, I this was the only solution I saw, but it's not only that. I thought I could write a really good song with all of you. And then the principal shows up. And he's like, hey, no, you can't do that. You actually have to pick one. Actually, yeah. He's like, no, actually, you gotta pick one. This doesn't work. Sorry, goodbye. And then he just flies away. And then he just <laughs> flies away. Well, actually, he doesn't fly away yet. He flies away later. So Uh-oh. in the interim, <laughs> all the boys are kind of like talking amongst themselves, being like, what should we do? Do we, like, do this group? Even though none of us were planning on being idols in a group, we all wanted, like, we went to the school to be solo idols. I mean, they, I see a very easy solution to this. Yes. Assign each boy a number. Haruka, roll 1d6. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> roll for idol partner. Or an even easier solution, you follow one of the boys' routes, save it, Restart the game, play it again. Hey, Otome game. There you go. That's how we do yeah. multiple save files. That's how we do it. And that so, was my second or third D&D joke of the episode. I can't remember. It's fine. We need many. It's, I know. So Just gotta fill it up. Essentially, they, they all come to the conclusion of, we know Haruka wasn't actually doing this because she didn't think less of us because we know Haruka. And... I I feel like she really was writing from the heart when she wrote this music because they also have the sheet music. And so, she had to have been writing from the heart because she can't write from the eyes not because from they the are eyes. empty as hell. Sorry, I'm just I have this picture of all of the boys and her up on the screen and she just well so that's what she does looking. she just stares. Gee. Uh, but so <laughs> in the end. They all, because again, this is just like a long dialogue of all of them talking about how they should be Haruka's partner or how much they love Haruka. And it's like another no, one I'm where you're Spartacus. like. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm Spartacus. No, I'm Spartacus. It's another thing where like, I personally, I feel like it would be more satisfying, especially this late into the series, if they were talking more about like themselves and their personal, like why they want to be idols and not mm-hmm. like why I love Haruka more than you. Yeah, but I mean. Otome game, baby. Otome game, baby. Uh, So, anyways, they all run back into the practice room, and Haruka's there, and Otoya is like, like, they kind of all come in about the same time, and they're all like, you know, let's do it. Let's do this group of six idol thing. And then Otoya brings up, hey, I noticed that you never actually finished the actual lyrics for this song. Why don't we write them all together? And then there's like, they all write the lyrics together and they're starting to be an idol group together. But it's still not allowed in the school. It's still not. Actually, How are they going to do that? Actually, I just also want to mention, uh, I forgot to say, Ren and Masato are actually, when I say all the boys at this point, it's, um, it's Natsuki, Shio, and Otoya, and Tokia. 
all those those four are like, let's do this. We'll write the lyrics together. So we'll have this group of four, and maybe Ren and Masada will join us later. But we'll write the lyrics, and then we'll sing them to the principal. There's no way he can turn down composing as good as this. Good luck with that, boys. They write up the lyrics, and then they run out to the roof because the president is about to fly away on his helicopter. <laughs> Oh, I thought you meant like he's just gonna grow wings and no, just no. be like whoop, whoop, whoop. He, has a, he has a helicopter. Maybe he's related to Mario's family. We don't know. Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! And what if this is Mari's dad? What if he is? What? what you what never if... see Mari's dad. You don't know. You don't know if this is Japan or somewhere else where this takes place. Tis a mystery. I'd Illuminati <laughs> confirmed. confirmed. So they run up to the roof and they're like, wait, principal, before you go, you have to hear our song. And then and then okay. <laughs> Ren and the like the other two show up and you're like, wow. And they're like, yeah, I wanted I'm going to sing the song with them. And you're like, wow, I sure hope that they know the lyrics that they came up with when they were there. Um, yep. Anyways, they sing the song together and it's the Magi 1000 percent song, the one that the very beginning of the show starts with. Yep. And. It's another similar scene to, like, the Hayato scene where the principal ends up in, like, this, like, black, like, dark room and there's, like, all these sparkles and hearts and they, like, Ratatouille style come up to him and he imagines <laughs> being in, like, the best idol amazing place in the entire world. Um, uh-huh. And he's, like, <gasps> like, after they're done, they're, like, that was so powerful. He's, like, that song, it, it wasn't, like, 100%. No, it was 1,000% love. Yes, Magi 1,000% love. That's the name of the song. And if it's not the, the name of the song, like, I'm not accepting it. But that was absolutely amazing. Best song I've ever heard. Goodbye. And takes off in his helicopter. Okay, whatever. So the others are like, I guess that was permission <laughs> to do this. Okay, whatever, anime. Um, so, yeah, episode 11. So they're in their group of six. Uh, the thing that started happening at the very beginning of this episode and kind of at the very end of the last episode is you kind of get ideas that Tokyo's manager still doesn't know about the school thing and is starting to, like, catch on to him. Uh-oh. And during this time, like, the others will have, like, practice and they'll do stuff, but then Tokyo will be showing up late or he'll be really tired. Uh-oh, Chihaya Montana. Chihaya Montana. Gotta get your head in the game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The other thing that's bad, though, is none of the other boys know that he's Hayato. So they just think he has, like, a part-time job. Hayato slash Tokyo slash Chihaya Montana is, like, so overworked that he starts, like, blacking out and getting dizzy and collapsing and stuff. Of course he does. Of course we went here. Oh, yes. And at some point, uh, he collapses in front of his manager and he wakes up and he's in his apartment. Like, instead of, like, not the dorm, but, like, apparently, like, the Hayato apartment. And he has a flower in his hand, and he doesn't remember, but he also met the cute cat boy in the woods. Whoa! Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but unfortunately, he does not see a cute cat boy when he wakes up. He sees oh. who you know to be the president of his idol agency. Uh-oh. He kind of looks like Commissioner Gordon from, like, the Spider-Man thing. He's got, like, a mustache? Yeah, and, like, like, like gray, multicolored, graying hair. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, and he is like, hey, what are you up to? We found you collapsed. You have a fever. You need to sleep. And also, I know your secret. Why are you at Saotome Academy? <laughs> <laughs> and then... Bro, why are you going to school? And then Tokyo is like, uh, actually, I'm so sorry about that. It's I, I was meant to tell you, but... And then, like, the president starts getting, like, super upset. And he's like, well, your contract's about to expire with our company. Does this mean you're just leaving us? Does this mean you don't care about me? Are you, like, even responsible? How are you going to be a good idol where you're so responsible and collapsing and getting hurt like this and not telling the company you work for that you also are doing this other thing that presumably you signed some sort of contract for? Probably a legal, like, bad thing to do. Yeah, but, probably. Uh, and then Tokyo's like, I did this because I just want to sing. I don't want to be in these goofy performances anymore. I am Chihaya number three, and I need to sing. <laughs> I just want, want to, to sing. sing. Like that kid in Monty Python. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'd rather just sing. No, no, stop the music. <laughs> None of that right now. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> <laughs> so then the president is just getting more and more worked up 
And then he starts coughing, and then he starts clutching his chest. Is he having a heart attack right now? And then the president faints. God damn it, anime. And Hayato calls an ambulance. God damn it, anime. And the others, meanwhile, are, like, getting ready for practice. But Chihaya isn't there. And they're like, oh. what are we going to do without Tokyo? Chihaya Montana, where are you? Chihaya Montana, where are you? Uh, and then they're like, hey, why? We, we kind of can tell Haruka that something's going on. Like, what aren't you actually telling us? And Haruka's feeling conflicted because she's like, they do have the right to know, but it's not my place to tell them about the Hayato thing, which is yeah. Fair. So, uh, back at the hospital, the principal wakes up, and, not principal, the president wakes up, and Toki is, like, there waiting in the hallway of the hospital, and he's like, hey, and, like, Tokyo comes in, and he's like, hey, I'm sorry for blowing up at you in there, uh, I realize that I apparently have anger problems that causes me to have, that, you know, cause me to have this heart attack, I just got too worked up, and I was Damn too much in my Gordon. own head. Chill I know. out. <laughs> And he's like, actually, the reason why I got so upset is because I've always looked at you like a son because I've never had one. And the thought of losing you made me sad. But I realize now that I had this near death experience that you have the right to like pursue your own dreams. Uh, and then he's like, you know, if you don't choose to renew your contract, you won't be Hayato anymore. And then Tokyo is like, no, I, I, I want to do my own thing as myself, as Chihaya Montana. And then the, commi the commissioner <laughs> is like, okay, that's fine. And then Commissioner Gordon <laughs> says, okay. Okay. I'm so proud of you, Chihaya Montana. <laughs> so that was, I assume, their formal breaking of contracts. So Hayato is no more. Sarah, this the show is basically just like, there is no anime anymore. This is just us making random pop culture references, references to the tune of an idol anime. <laughs> Please, I hope nobody, like, skips through episodes, because this is so confusing right now. <laughs> <laughs> at the very least, we need to, like, put a note at the beginning of the episode. In order to fully understand this one, you need to have seen Idolmaster 2011, or listen to our episode about it, and also seen the Three Shihayas video, and watch Spider-Man, any of them. And, um, and, and Hannah also Montana. And be, like, vaguely familiar with the concept of Hannah Montana, <laughs> and also Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so not, sorry. I'm not, but I am. That's just who we are. So sorry about our podcast. <laughs> You know that song? It's like, sorry for party rocking. Sorry for our podcast. Sorry for our podcast. <laughs> sorry for podcasting. So, on the way home, so it's it's late, like, Hayato's super late for practice, and on the mm -hmm. way home, he gets into a taxi, and he calls Atoya, and he's like, hey, I'm so sorry I was late. I promise it'll never happen again because of a thing, and then Atoya's like, hey, what's up? And then his phone dies. Uh -oh. And Tokia is also stuck in a traffic jam because also that happened, I guess. So there's no way he'll get to practice on time. Episode 12, so second to last episode. Uh, it opens up with like a weird dream sequence of Haruka flying through the night thinking about Tokia. And it's a woman's voice singing, so I don't know if it's Haruka's voice actress. It sounded very different than her voice, but maybe it was. Um, hmm. so there's a, the song for this episode, but, uh, on the way back, so Hayato is still stuck in this car and presumably enough time has passed that news has got out that Hayato, like Hayato as a performer is no longer with the agency and is no longer performing. And in addition oh. to that, he is now going to South Homing Academy. So this news came out before Hayato could tell his friends. Uh, back at the school, all the other boys are, like, mixed emotions. Like, some of them are, like, sad, and some of them are frustrated, and some of them are a little empathetic. And Haruka's like, I'm so sorry I didn't tell you, but it wasn't my place to talk about it. So, yeah. yeah and then and then there's also, like, Shio's upset, like, why, like, does this mean you don't actually care about us? Do you just want to do the stuff with Hayato? So there's drama. But, and then also all the other boys are like, hey, if he was keeping this from us... And also, he hasn't been at practice. Like, should we even keep him in the idol group or not at this point? Yeah. Yeah, which is all fair assessments. They, so they're all, so they're all like, separately, all the other boys 
are like trying to decide. So this is them not actually I like this one because this is them not talking about Haruka. This is them talking about Chihaya Montana. So they're, they're this is <laughs> but it's nice because it's very much like them being like how much they, of this is me being friends with this other person versus my own personal goals versus why I like singing and music, etc. So they finally passed the reverse vegetable test. They finally did. They're finally talking about not romance. So Haruka's sad. Uh, she's like out on a balcony. She's talking to like this pigeon. The bird flies away and she runs out of the room and she follows the bird and the bird leads her to Tokyo who just arrived back on campus while all of the shit's going down. And she like comes up to him and she's all distraught because she's like, I thought you were gone and you were like never coming back because of all this Hayato stuff. Mm-hmm. And then everyone else shows up like behind her, like all the boys like magically appear right there. The boys. The boys. And then Ren like immediately is like, "Hey, what the fuck? Like this is this was not cool. Like we are like in a group together. You didn't tell us this. This is why you were missing practice and not doing great." And Hayato's like, "Yeah, I need to explain myself. The reason why I kept it secret is so my agency wouldn't find out and I didn't want to have like this be a big deal, but apparently it did become a big deal and it's because I only like did things halfway and I never really fully committed to one thing and bom, bom. then he's like well, I quit the agency I'm not doing the acting or the Hayato thing anymore could you please let me sing with you instead because my I just want to sing again please and then he also goes to Haruka and he's like you're the one who inspired me to sing like from my heart again and you help me find the one place where I belong in this world and then he was very much as like uh like Daisuke, like, but then he's like, Daisuke, but then he's like, your songs. So you're like, okay. <laughs> I love <laughs> your right, songs. <laughs> and you're like, all right. <laughs> all right, buddy. But Haruka's fine with that, because I think that's all she wanted anyways. I don't think she's after romance in this version of her life. She's only yeah. after becoming a songwriter. So then all the other boys are like, okay, we'll start over again, and this is the beginning of our group for realsies this time. So... They are all like, okay, we are a group now. Yay, the boys. And then a bunch of spotlights erupt from the school. And over the oh. loudspeaker, the, pr- the pr- principal announces that he has this big announcement to make. And there is a projection of like each of the six boys popping up with like their names over jazzy music. And they're like, what are our faces doing projected over the school? Whoa. And he's like, hey, these six boys are going to fight from the school that you all know are finally going to debut as the idol group Starish. And they're like, okay, Whoa. that's the name of our idol group. Did we sign a contract? But, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, that's <laughs> one way to do things, I guess. So they go up to the principal and they're like, uh, does this mean we passed our graduation audition? And the principal's like, yep, it's time for you guys to debut. We're going to ride this wave of the Hayato controversy. Might as well gain attention. Your song was already amazing. You passed the second you sang that song together. I mean, I guess the whole writing the controversy thing works out. Yeah, it makes sense, at that, least that level. That tracks. And they're like, yay, all six of us did it, and I'm so we're so excited because Haruka, you'll be able to be our songwriter with us. And then five other producers just silently, like, shake their fists and try to learn Vocaloid software. <laughs> but then the principal, is, well, the principal actually is like, actually, Haruka is not going to debut with you. And they're like, oh, what? And then he's like, I am actually going to hire the most powerful and popular composer in Japan. The number one person in Japan. The god of composing. Zero. Right? And he never (laughs) says who it is. And you're like, it's zero. (laughs) Like, like it's it's got to be zero, right? Idoluminati confirmed. Idoluminati heckin confirmed. (laughs) Yeah, so anyways, that is the shock, because Haruka's like, am I not good enough to debut with the boys? And also, like, doing this with the boys is the thing that's been driving me this whole time. And also, writing music for Hayato is the reason why I write music in general. So, she's shocked and upset. And the principal's like, is it good enough for you to just enjoy Starish? Like, don't you, because you've mentioned before, Haruka, that all you want is to hear Starish together. You never mentioned that it had to be your songs. And also, 
composers write songs for all sorts of idols and idols sing songs from all kinds of composers this is how the industry works and you're like wow Ooh. that's harsh it's very harsh damn and then the principal's also like and one other thing is the reason why the one other big reason why i can't have you do this is you're missing something to make it like there's something you don't have that you need to make it which is like every like like salt in the wound like mean big ouchies yeah hey sarah what episode are we on at this point last episode ah uh, yep there it is yep the main character conflict in the last episode main character conflict and so she's all upset uh and like she the boys end up and her end up splitting up for the night and all the boys are like uh well what should we do should we quit because like we don't want to do this well haruka but like also this is like we went to the school in the first place to sing and become idols and what should we do i don't know what to do haruka said that she just wants to hear us sing but is that like really what's in her heart the next day the boys are all like not able to focus at all right so they're like we're supposed to practice because we have that debut but we don't even know if we mm-hmm. want to debut and haruka's not here and we're upset and then her friend Tomo bursts into the room, like, redhead girl, and she's like, Haruka's missing. <laughs> and you're like, oh! She ran away with that green boy from a few episodes ago. <laughs> she went back to her grandma. Haruko the familiar went back to her controller grandma, Obasan. <laughs> so she is in the countryside. And her grandma is like, oh, Haruka, I wasn't expecting you back so soon. Why are you moping around? Why don't you tell me all those stories about your school life? And she's like, seven beautiful boys fell in love with me, but I think one of them was a cat. Now I can't date any of them. And it's sad. And I messed up the save file. I think this is the bad ending. And then the Haruka's grandma's like, oh, it's okay, little Haruka. And then she goes up to the piano and she starts playing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, which I thought was a really cute throwback to that other cute episode. And you're like, aww. Yep. And then I wrote down, this is this was my notes. Something awakens in Haruka's dead soulless eyes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, and so her grandma starts talking like like while she's like playing Twinkle. Does she suddenly does she suddenly get pupils? I think she might tear up a little bit, which like maybe it makes it look like her eyes are glassy just because she's emoting. <laughs> Oh, hmm, um, maybe. But grandma, the grandma starts talking about how much Haruka loved playing music as a child. And then Haruka starts, like, breaking down, being like, actually, I'm not on break. I'm here because of those seven beautiful boys are, who are in love with me. And also, the principal said I wasn't good enough. And also, you know, tells about how basically sucky her entire time at school has been, except for her time with these boys who she is now forbidden to hang out with. Yep, that's kind of fucked. Yeah, right? Uh, but her grandma comforts her, and she's like, oh, no, you're a talented little girl. It's okay. And then the next day, Haruka's like, you know, and it's also, like, her grandma, like, comforts her. And he's like, it's okay. And then Haruka's, like, remembering her actual love for music and her time with the boys. And she's like, I'm not ready to give this up yet. I've got to go back and get my boys. And she runs to the airport. Oh, the next, it's actually the next day. So she <laughs> spends the whole night. And she, she's leaving. She's like, goodbye, Grandma. I'm going back to school after all. And she walks out into, like, the, you know, like, the countryside where her grandma lives. And then you hear... And she gets hit by a truck. Oh, my God. No, they... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Uh, she hears the faint sound of six <laughs> idol boys singing in the distance. Of course. How do, how do they know where she is? How do they know where she is? That's some stalker shit right there. How do they know where she lives? Out in the country? Did they? They obviously did not follow her. Did they put a GPS tracker on her? How in the hell did they find this so, girl? So they're there and they are singing in the field. And they're singing a song that Haruka actually uh, started writing a few episodes ago. I just forgot to mention. It's like called Map of Color. This is like one of my other favorite ones from the Udapri um, anime because it's like mm-hmm. all six of the boys and their singing's like really overlaid and it's like kind of like jazzy boy bandy. It's really good. <laughs> And so 
the boys are singing. And then there's like, again, the weird Ratatouille style sequence when Haruka's all happy again. And then like at the end of that weird Ratatouille style sequence, her grandma's like, oh, that was a good song, kids. <laughs> so the boys are like, hey, we came and stalked you and followed you and tracked you down. And just so we could drag you back because we are inspired by your songs and you're like the thing that lights our lives and is like the motivation for us to sing good. And then Haruka is like, yeah, and I personally am done run away, running away. I'm going to fight this. I'm going to be your composer. Yeah, go baby. And then the president shows up. I'm sorry. Or the principal shows up. Yep. How did he get here? I mean, did they all take his helicopter? I mean, at this point, she is in the registrar for the school. So at least he would know where she lives. I mean, I guess. And the principal's like, you did it, Haruka. The reason why you were not, I told you, you, you didn't have what it takes is because you never stick up for yourself. And now that you did and said you wanted to compose for these boys, you can be the composer. <laughs> Which but, is, like, very circular. But, no, she she didn't actually do it, though. No, no, she really didn't. She, she, uh, she decided she to go back she to was, the school. And, like, yeah. she could have chickened out at the last minute. Like, uh -huh. she didn't she didn't actually do it. She yep. didn't... She has not completed this task. Yep. This is, like, the first few gyms of the Pokemon anime where Ash, like, just kind of does a good job but still loses and he gets the badge anyway. Yep. It's season one. I guess one. they were out of... <laughs> I guess they were out of episodes. They were out of badges. And they were like, yeah, we're just going to do this real quick. We're just going to come up with some excuses for why you, you've grown as a character when you totally haven't. Plus, you know, we're 20 minutes into this episode-ish, and we haven't had our final concert yet. Whoa! I'm guessing it's time to remedy that. Yes, and it immediately cuts. It's the time for the debut concert. Day of the debut concert. Giant auditorium, hundreds of fans. Apparently, they're debuting huge. Uh, and the song is, uh, they, they sing Magi 1000% Love. Uh, Doki 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 Hey! And it's cute, because it, like, it's like they're singing, and it's kind of cut in with them, like, like getting ready for the concert, and Harika cheering them on. And then, like, it, cuts, it starts going into credits, and there's flashbacks of, like, the anime up to this point and then overlaid mm -hmm. with like the animation you kind of already saw in the first episode and that's it that's season one of Udano Prince Sama da, 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 da. we've done it we did it we did Uda pre season one we have completed it uh, I guess final thoughts overall um, mm -hmm. I Okay, I like the characters. I really like the songs. I don't like just like like it, the interactions just don't feel good, right? Like they feel like mm -hmm. it's an Otome game. The characters are almost always just talking about Haruka and how great Haruka is and how much in love they are with her and how much she inspires her and how talented she is. But like they're not talking a lot about being idols and writing songs, which is what we're here for. Yeah, or if it is about them or their backstories, it's almost every single one of them was very formulaic, where it was like, they meet Haruka, and then Haruka is sad or has a conflict, and then they help Haruka with their conflict by remembering something in their past, and then they sing a song, and that's the episode, you know? It's not... Yeah. Yeah, it's not like... It, it doesn't feel like you get to see the characters interacting with anyone but Haruka. So that's my main gripe yeah. with it. I, I feel like I don't know what future seasons are. I feel like there is room for other seasons to open up and not be so Otome gamey. And I don't know if they are. I imagine the trend probably is away from Otome game just because, I mean, I know the bigger Uda pre fan base kind of ships the boys together more than they ship boys with main character. So I'm yeah. feeling like if the merch is going that way, they might change the story away from that too. But I don't yeah. know. We have no idea. Neither of us have watched anything but the first season. Uh, but I will say, first season, the animation is good. It's A1. They're known for being relatively high quality, even though they do like regular seasonal anime. Like Sometimes they, mm -hmm. they get a little shoddy, but this one was all... All the dance sequences were pretty elaborate, 2D animated. 
Um, there were solo sides on Haruka, but you know, it's that's okay. just their style. That's just who she is. <laughs> that's how she looks <laughs> in the Otome <laughs> games too. Amazing. Hey, Sarah. Question. Yes. Who is 